afternoon. This is a notice of a special joint public meeting of the City Commission of the City of Brownsville and the Brownsville Public Utilities Board pursuant to Chapter 551, Title V of the Texas Government Code, the Texas Open Meetings Act notice is hereby given that the City Commission of the City of Brownsville, Texas, in accordance with Article 5, Section 12 of the Charter of said city, will meet with the Brownsville Public Utilities Board on Tuesday, July 11, 2017 at 4 p.m. in the Commission Chambers on the second floor of Brownsville City Hall Federal Building located at 1001 East Elizabeth Street, Brownsville, Cameron County, Texas. We will begin with the executive session. Letter A, pursuant to the Texas Government Code, annotated section 551.086 for a presentation and discussion of an integrated resource plan for electric utility systems improvements, additions, or sales. Okay, now I will entertain a motion, but before I do that, um, summertime is time when everybody thinks we ought to be taking a little bit of time off, and it seems like we have a lot of meetings, so I want to thank everybody for taking time out of their schedules. Uh, because all of the stuff that we're doing is very, very important, and it, and, and it warrants uh, a lot of your attention, but it also warrants a lot of your time. I was telling that to Hoel yeah. a little bit ago, and so it, um, I do want to give you my sincere thanks. So now I'll entertain a motion to go into the executive session. I'll make the motion. Okay. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Mark, are we going to go up to the fourth floor? Is that the... That Executive the session will be on the fourth floor, HR training room. Okay, the joint yes. meeting will be on the fourth floor? Yes. Okay. And we'll adjourn up to the fourth floor. And we'll come back to the chambers to adjourn so we can begin the regular meeting. Okay, very good. Public meeting of the City Commission of the City of Brownsville pursuant to Chapter 551, Title V of the Texas Government Code, the Texas Open Meetings Act notice is hereby given that the City Commission of the City of Brownsville, Texas, in accordance with Article 5, Section 12 of the Charter of said city, will convene a regular meeting on Tuesday, July 11, 2017 at 6 p.m. in the Commission Chambers of the second floor of Brownsville City Hall, Old Federal Building, located at 1001 East Elizabeth Street, Brownsville, Cameron County, Texas. We will begin with a pledge. Please stand. to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Honor the Texas flag. I pledge allegiance to the Texas one state, one under God, one and indivisible. Let's remain standing for the prayer. Father God, we thank you for your love, your grace, and your mercy. And yet, help us not to forsake your truth. Draw us into your way of thinking and help us to be united around your way of thinking on each issue personally and for the city of Brownsville. Lead and guide our mayor and commissioners and each presenter tonight. And lead and guide us to move forward the way would be a blessing to the city and each individual. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Amen. Mayor's activity update. I'm just going to make one announcement, and that is this will be our only meeting for the month of July and for whoever may be going on vacation and for anybody who's listening out there and is on vacation, have a great summer. Um, hopefully we'll get a chance to, to recharge and regroup and, and keep going forward uh, for the city. That's all I have. Commissioner's activity update. Okay, if not, we'll have pretty, I'm I, sorry. Go ahead. I just wanted to thank city staff for putting on the 4th of July extravaganza at our sports park. Um, it was one of the most incredible 4th of July shows I have ever seen. The fireworks ran for about almost 40 minutes. It was an incredible show. So I just wanted to thank city staff for making sure that our city, I think we had about 5,000 people at our sports park. We had, um, yeah, 5,000 people. So I just wanted to really thank city staff and the 4th of July Freedom Festival for um, making sure that every year this event gets bigger and better um, for the people who deserve it the most. So um, that's all. Thank you. Thank you. Presentation. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm I'm Go ahead. Yeah. Um, I just wanted to mention that I was uh, attended the Greater Brownsville, uh, Downtown Brownsville Committee uh, recently last week, and I was very encouraged that there's going to be a a shift in emphasis now 
toward the downtown Brownsville area. Okay. The GBIC put it on, and a lot of uh, the stakeholders, you might say, were there, and I was really encouraged to know that there's going to be a focus uh, reshifted to downtown. Good. I've been there for a while. Yeah. I'm sorry, Commissioner. Yeah, that's fine. And on my report, I just wanted to ask people, you know, uh, with the use of social media a lot of the times, you know, people lose patience when it comes to when we get heavy rains the way we did this past week. And it's not that the infrastructure is not there. A lot of the times our code enforcement cannot get to all these people that are using their blowers, that are throwing leaves, grass, and everything into our gutters. And when we call Public Works and Public Works heads out there and they start, they take the daisy machine and they start pulling out all of the, inf all of the, the trash that's in there. You know, what they're pulling out is basically leaves. They're pulling out grass. They're pulling all these things that shouldn't be getting down into the gullies, and that's what they're getting. And that's why we have the flooding. FYI, we've mentioned it before, and I'll mention it again. When we get a heavy rain, <coughs> when we get a downpour the way we did this past week, we have systems through the PUB, through the city of Brownsville, where water will go to the river water will go to the north main drain but you need to give it 30 minutes it's going to take 30 minutes for the pumps to activate to start pumping out i'm sure we can probably show a video and i'm sure uh, we can get a video later on to show people exactly how the water goes out uh, on impala drive on at the impala pumps we have five pumps that are pumping out 120,000 gallons a minute so that water is going out that water is going out to the river we've got water going out to the main drain but you know, you need to give it, I'm sorry, you need to give it a little bit of time. The water will recede. When there are problems, please call it in, and I'll say it, and I'll say it over and over and over again. We have established already for four and a half years, 546 help. Call 546 help, turn in your report, let us know that they're standing water. Public works within a matter of hours should be out there. We don't have a lot of work. But if you utilize that, that will get the work order started. That will get staff out there with a report and it will get done okay and on the last uh report that i wanted to give um this past saturday on july the 8th uh thank you to public works i wanted to thank uh, gms everybody that came out to the volunteers uh, for the tire collection we had 722 tires collected within the city of brownsville and something's wrong with my internet i'm trying to get the i've got the i should have printed it out i never do uh, but we had a total of 722 tires collected that otherwise would have been in properties, that otherwise would have been collecting water, that would have been, you know, contributing to all the diseases that are going on. So thank you to the people that brought out their tires to the four different locations. I know that at Gonzales Park, we had the biggest collection uh, to date. And mind you, when there was Zika reports, they were within this area. So I'm glad that we were able to get a lot of those tires out of there, but it was pretty much distributed equally um, amongst the city, but we were able to get 70, 722 tires out of the, out of homes and into mm -hmm. the, into the landfill. Okay. And now that you mentioned that, Commissioner, the county will be doing another one uh, on July the 15th, which is a week from this Saturday, I believe. It is, uh, it is this Saturday. Or this Saturday, I'm sorry. Saturday. Um, because there is, in the lower Rio Grande Valley um, Development Corporation, we we're actually having a, um, a recycling of those tires for the entire valley. It's one of our first regional efforts. Uh, I'm hoping it goes well. I'm, 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 uh, I think it will go well. It's yeah. one of those common threads that uh, we all know that we have this condition that we know that we can purge ourselves of. So um, everybody cooperate. I think it's it, it, it makes your whole valley looked better. Mayor, if you don't mind, I've got the numbers. I just wanted to get them sure, into the record. Sure, go ahead. But it was approximately 726 tires, 11.88 tons that were collected at the four sites. Gonzalez Park had 213 tires. Kabler Park had 205 tires. District 3 had a uh, Veterans Park, I'm sorry. Veterans Park had 170 tires. And Oliveira Park had 138 tires. So thank you to all the people that brought out the, the tires and, and kept them already, you know, out of out of the homes and out of causing possible health risks. Thank you. And don't forget, don't throw them in the Rosacas. The first Rosaca that we no. that we dredged, we took out 200 tires. Okay, so uh, 
Uh, thank you all for, for cooperating. And a whole lot of car batteries, too. You're right. <laughs> okay, employee of the month, Charlie. Our first presentation is employee of the month, Mr. Omar Garza, sign technician. Mayor, Mayor, members of the commission, please help me welcome the employee of the month for July, Omar Garza. Omar? Omar. Uh, I think that's Robert Garza, he's, uh, he's, uh, he's director. <laughs> Close enough. Uh, Omar began his career with the city of Brownsville in, in uh, 2009. <coughs> at the Parks Department. He transferred to Mr. Esparza's department in 2013. Uh, great young man, positive attitude. Uh, right now he's assigned to uh, working with, as a sign technician. And as you know, we prepare our own signs and things like that uh, when we have issues or when we want to put signs up and, uh, throughout our, our city. Of course, we've also been working with our, uh, uh, with our markings and our painting uh, equipment and things like that. Uh, he's always available to us when we have issues, emergencies. We gotta get him out of uh, his home to come help us. Uh, thank you to his wife and young boy who are with us today for allowing us to do that. Uh, and uh, we appreciate his service to our city and he, we will continue to, to be a positive uh, part of the city employment. Uh, of course he gets the, uh, the plaque, the little pin, it's not a sign. <laughs> and uh, a watch. I always have to check, make sure it's not a lady's watch that I give it to the guys. So, there you go. And uh, Omar is eligible for the Employee of the Year in right. our banquet in December. Omar has a few words for us. Okay, great. Thank you, Omar. Well, first of all, I just want to say uh, thank you for my director, my supervisor for giving an opportunity for work, uh, working for the city of Brownsville. And thanks for my wife for supporting me all, all the time. Thank Omar, you. congratulations. Good work. Congratulations, Omar. Thank you. <laughs> OK, Next. the Brownsville Convention Visitors Next. Bureau Quarterly Report. I think that would be Mr. Okay. Ayala. Thank you very much. Uh, my name is Mariano Ayala, President and CEO of the Brownsville Convention Visitors Bureau, your Convention Visitors Bureau, Mayor, Commissioners. Uh, welcome to the two new commissioners. My first time up here in a while. I'm back. I'm stronger. And I'm just as excited as always because Brownsville is a beautiful place. We have a tremendous city. Times have been tough. But guess what? Our attitude is unbreakable. We have a lot of positive things that are happening, and we're looking very very positively to the future. Uh, in front of, uh, I'm gonna present a first and second quarter report. Uh, as far as our mission is concerned is, uh, we like to uh, demonstrate how beautiful our city is with a great attitude, especially the people that are here. Uh, it says where the fiesta never ends is a state of mind. It's an attitude. Hundreds of people have come to Brownsville for conferences and the first thing they always say and the last thing they say is, I can't believe how happy your people are, how friendly. That's what we're selling, is a festive frame of mind. And when people leave Brownsville, they'll always remember Brownsville. Our board of directors, uh, self-explanatory, Dr. Knopp is our chairman, Craig Grove, vice chair, Mr. Zapata, treasurer, Rick Real, secretary, and so forth. With me is uh, Felix Espinosa, Assistant Administrative Director, a jack of all trades. Uh, we a strong staff of four with two facilities. But we have a lot of volunteers and we work very well with all the attractions and entities. Uh, some of the highlights, we attended the National AAU Conference, uh, the National Association of Sports Commission, Texas Association of Athletic with the uh, 
sports, uh, sport parts and recreation, and my hats off to the parts and recreation, uh, especially the director and BCIC, who's very supportive of the sports park. They're doing a great job. We're bringing in tournaments of all kinds, and uh, we're going to go after bigger tournaments. And this is a cooperative effort, and I'm just excited about how everybody's working together. And uh, we've also met with people from Bike Texas and I, the uh, Active Tourism Cycling. Uh, we've also met with the Secretary of Tourism from Matamoros. Uh, we're starting to work closely. We're trying to see if we can do some conferences in Matamoros and Brownsville and open, that, open up that market once again like it used to be. We also hosted a uh, gentleman named Mr. Pryor Smith who has a radio show in Canada called Calling Canada. He's very popular and next year we're going to bring him back and we're going to have our own show and invite all the winter Texans from the valley. Some of our community involvement is uh, Air Fiesta, Char Days, the Holiday Village, Crime Stoppers, Los Fresno CID, CISD, uh, Leadership Brownsville, Brownsville Day at the Capitol and Taste of La Frontera. We're very community oriented. Uh, we like to support all the efforts that are going on in Brownsville so that way everyone can see that we're working together. <coughs> Some of the advertising, as you see, we do the state Texas travel guide, Texas highways, Texas events. Uh, we have meeting, meetings today, peoples and places. We also do some, uh, the Seat Texas First is one of our best advertising tools because of that. We've, I'll show you in the next page. We get a lot of uh, uh, direct mail outs. Uh, the circulation is over 700,000 with a total of 975,000 for the fall edition. What it is is they put a circular in the Sunday newspaper once a year in the fall and this is the amount of people that receive uh, part of our advertisement. We also do the Texas First Spring issue, and this when we get over a million circulations. And out of that, we get direct mails that we send out to, uh, to people that see this ad and they request a brochure. Uh, we'll send them out, and uh, last year we sent out 17,000 direct mail outs. So uh, we, we're averaging pretty good. We're starting to advertise again in Mexico. It was a little bit uh, uh, down, but we're starting again. And matter of fact, we made contact with a gentleman from San Luis Potosí, and we're setting up a tourism conference where we take our vendors to San Luis Potosí, sell Brownsville, we're talking about hotels, the port, the chambers, et cetera, et cetera. And we all go and sell Brownsville with the hopes of bringing in tourism from that area. And then we're gonna do it vice versa, where San Luis Potosí brings their vendors to Brownsville, and they try to sell San Luis, uh, San Luis Potosí to the people here in the valley. Some of the marketing brochures that we have, uh, the first one that you see on the left is the mini culture brochure, which, uh, which I like a lot because it shows uh, all the entities that are located in the uh, mini culture district, the historical guide, and uh, we also have our own brochure. It's called Visit Browns of Texas. Uh, we print 60,000 and 10,000 of those are in Spanish. We put them in the hotels, RV parks, the Valley Chamber of Commerce, the Texas State Travel Centers, and we destroyed them in Mexico, Canada, and here in the United States. Our website's analytics, Google Analytics, uh, in 2016, for the first two quarters, we had 220,000 views. Uh, this past, uh, th for this first two quarters, we have over 221,000 for a 0.41% increase. Demographics, uh, by country, uh, 98,000, almost 100,000, 99,000 was in the United States. Mexico had 4,000. We had 1,300 from Russia looking at Brownsville. Uh, states, Texas is the number one with 81,000 views. And then cities, we have Brownsville, and then Houston is second, and Dallas is third. Some of the trade shows we do is the Winter Texan Expo, which attracts over 7,000 people in the Upper Valley and we attend that, and I'm glad to say that the Brownsville Airport was attending that with us, and they did a great presentation that, that I, I think uh, we're in good hands at the airport right now. I'm very positive about our new director and his assistant, and they're very cooperative with everyone. So uh, they were up there with us, as well as at the McAllen Travel Health and Wellness Expo. Uh, we have the Welcome Home RGV Connection, and that is a, a, a fair for all the winter Texans that are down in the valley. We go and set up a booth 
And uh, it's been proven that the museum, the zoo, and what have you, get a lot of winter Texans that come from the Upper Valley to Brownsville to see our, our agencies or attractions because of our attendance there and the exposure we give them. Some of the FAM tours or fam fam familiarization tours we've given is the Midi Culture District, Resaca de la Palma, the Texas Tropical Trail. The Texas Tropical Trail brought 50 people to Brownsville. Uh, we were able to rent a bus for them. We toured them to Palo Alto, the airport, and I still have people talking about the airport because our director gave them a tour of behind the scenes of the airport. And some of these people are in their 50s and between 50 and 60, and they have been to several airports, but they had never seen the workings of an airport in the back of the scenes. And our director did that for the first time so to this day, they're bragging about the Brownsville Airport, and uh, because of that, they also come down to Brownsville to visit our, our uh, attractions. We also do a lot of presentations at the RV parks throughout the valley. For example, VIP Park in Laferia, Paul's RV Park, Dishman RV Parks, Laferia RV Park, Winter Haven, which is one of the largest here in Brownsville. So we're very in touch with all the winter Texans. A couple of the conferences we had here in Brownsville in the first two quarters was Women in Government, the fourth annual Building Professional Inspectors, and I want to th uh, thank Director Evaristo uh, Gomez for uh, approaching us to help her with that conference, and I believe they're going to be coming back in the next couple of years. Some of the data, uh, people, I, I normally don't speak negatively, but Facts are facts, and I think you all need to know the facts. For the first quarter, we were down 5%. Uh, in the year 2016, for the first quarter, we had $5,300,000 uh, come in. For the first quarter of this fiscal year, we had $5 million for a minus 5%. For the second quarter, we had, uh, in 2016, we had 67 or 6,700,000. This year, for the second quarter, we have 5,744,000 for a minus 14%. As far as occupancy is concerned, in the first quarter, in 2016, we had 59.7% occupancy. This year, we had 56% for a minus 3%. And in the second quarter, we had in 2016, 72% occupancy. This year, it was down to 65.7 for a minus 6.9%. So uh, things are not looking very good, but we do have a couple of reasons. A, you all are aware of the violence that Mexico or what have you, and people fear coming down by the border. But B, we don't have a full service hotel anymore, and we're going on two years. But uh, we don't cry wolf. What we do, we uh, change it. We use the Midi Culture District. We use the Dean Porter Park Pavilion. And once again, Parks and Recreation works very closely with us on that. We use the Camille Playhouse. We use the zoo, the Bronze of Fine Arts Museum, the historic Bronze Museum. And we bring a conference there. And we ha have the breakout rooms at the other entities. So as you see, we're not turning away conferences, but it's real hard to sell a planner because the first thing they ask is, which is your first, which is your full service hotel? And our answer is, we don't have one. And the next thing we know is, we hear a buzzing sound, they hung up. But if they give us a minute, we're able to sell our, our, our uh, conventions by saying, hey, we do have an option. And what we do, we say, why don't we pay your way down here so we can give you a tour of the facilities we're talking about because what this does for you and your people is going to give you an opportunity to take a break as you walk towards the Camille Playhouse, the zoo, or what have you. We have a golf cart in case for someone that's handicapped or whatever. They can use that break to get on the phone, or if they smoke, they smoke. And guess what? The people who have done that have appreciated that, that they get out in the fresh air and what have you. So... We offered the opportunity for a meeting planner to come to Brownsville and take a fan tour of what we have. And so far it's worked. So we're bringing the State Crime Stopper Conference back in 2019 and 2020. And uh, we're also looking at, what's the other conference? 
Oh, and we're, we're bringing back the Little Miss Kickball State Conference again, which people kind of make fun of that, but guess what? They bring in 50 to 70 teams. You're talking about 12 players, 10 to 12 players. You're talking about mom and pop, and they're staying at our hotels. So uh, in a nutshell, it's a little bit bleak right now, but we have a lot of positive things going on in Brownsville. And of course, if we have a full service hotel that comes in and builds, it's gonna jump us right back to where, you, where, where we used to be. So uh, I'll entertain any questions, but uh, that's about it. Bane, thank you so much. Anybody else? Thank you very much. Have Take a good care. Day. <laughs> Annual report. Good evening, Honorable Mayor and members of City Commission. My name is Susana Pablo, um, Edgar Gaussin, and Mr. Jolie Rubio, you already know them. Well, the Bicycle and P uh, Pedestrian Advisory Committee was formed um, and in February 2016, and tonight's presentation is about what we have accomplished in that time. Okay, in July 2016, we submitted a report on the mayor's challenge, and for it, we were awarded the Ladders of Opportunity for the Small City Award for efforts to benefit the health, uh, safety, transportation, and quality of life of our residents. We had the opportunity to strategize with Chief Rodriguez to promote bike safety and decrease accidents. Since then, PD has implemented Fun Bike Day, school presentations, and other outreach programs. Most people won't try something with which they aren't familiar. So to help ease the unfamiliar unfamiliarity, a how to start with Zaxter video was created and shared on social media to show just how simple Zaxter is to use. Also, BPAC promoted the program at Cyclovia. We wanted to make it known that the program is uh, uncomplicated and affordable. Zaxter is now at uh, 2,074 members strong throughout Harlingen, Brownsville, and UTRGV campuses. Uh, one of the top, toughest jobs <laughs> that we've had, and you know, we, we understand what you go through, is having to defend our trail infrastructure um, to the public. Because not all of them are staunch believers in a more active and healthy Brownsville. So that's what we do in social media. We try to promote, we try to, we defend it. Um, we also, for a while, we promote the 546 help program um, phone number because a lot of residents still don't know what it's used for. They know the number, they just don't know that they can call in uh, roadkill or branch overhang or any of the problems um, that they can face. They don't know about that program, so we try to promote that. This one, you can see that it was a very popular um, post. This was asking what ideas they had, how um, we could improve the trail system, Also, BPAC participated in the 2017 Hurricane Fair. That was a lot of fun. We were able to distribute coloring books, bracelets. Um, they were able to see the trail map. And we also sought um, input from the community on our trail system.
Thank you for allowing us the opportunity to speak. Um, people are very thankful, and uh, this gentleman here, I took a picture of him and I talked to him. Um, this is the Southmost Nature Trail. Um, you can read the quote, and he says, No, hombre, que bárbaro. Esta es mi ruta y me hicieron mi vida mucho más fácil. So, um, there's a lot of people who use the infrastructure for transportation, and it's a lot of help to them. Um, so we see that a lot of people are, are happy, and this is all thanks to you. This is all thanks to the city employees, and it's also thanks to the bicycle and running advocates who continue to push this. Um, and there's no doubt that people want to see more of this. Um, they have given us a long list of suggestions, and I'm going to give you a copy of those. Uh, but we try to narrow them down to the most important, and these include the following. Um, so we are hoping that the city continues to focus on grants. Um, I think that's the best way of getting these project done. And um, one of the suggestions was to um, build bicycle lanes in and around the UTRGV and TSC campuses, specifically on Gorgas Drive, on Ringgold, Richie Lee uh, Road, uh, Mexico Boulevard, and Palm Boulevard. So these top 10 suggestions are in no particular order. People also want sidewalks. One thing that they mentioned is, and this is in District 2, um, they want a sidewalk on King's Highway between Boca Chica and Robin Hood Drive. Um, that way it would be, it would create a great connection between um, or with Oliveira and Egli um, Elementary or middle school? Sorry. Elementary. People want more sidewalks in District 2. Um, this is uh, near Champion Elementary, uh, specifically on North Central Avenue to McKinsey. People love this idea, connecting both Champion and Parkings Middle School. And it is my understanding that phase one has already been designed, and we're very, very hopeful that it continues to phase two and phase three. Going back to the trails, uh, people say that they want more light, more lighting. And this is the, um, this is the Southwest Nature Trail, but specifically they want um, more lighting in the historic Battlefield Trail. And it would be great if we could implement these um, as solar lights, like we did in the Southmost Trail. Paid parking. This is next to Burns Middle School. People go there, drive their cars, and drop off people, or they get off themselves and ride their bicycles, jog. Um, very convenient, but it would be great if we get that space paved. My personal favorite, the West Road Trail. And as you know, there's been a lot of advocacy. We had two full town hall meetings uh, and a lot of people were speaking in favor of the construction of the West Road Trail. And uh, there's no doubt that this would be a wonderful, wonderful project. Um, for many, many reasons, it would connect, for example, a lot of schools' ideas, Skinner, Pace, um, uh, Oliveira Park, and Benavides Elementary. So uh, we are very grateful that the city approved the recent MOU with the county. So, uh, and we're hopeful that, uh, that this project continues and we hope that uh, we see the trail. Another issue is community awareness of pedestrian and bicycle safety. 
And I want to give a big shout out to the Brownsville Police Department Chief for advocating not only for bicyclists but for pedestrians as well. They've done uh, great videos and they've been to schools and talking to the students about um, bicycle safety. Also a shout out to the local advocates. There's a lot of running groups, there's a lot of bike groups. Uh, the city of Brownsville has done great videos on bicycle safety as well. And including um, BASD with their bicycle rodeos. Etiquette signs along the trails would be nice. Uh, we've had several incidents, crashes between cyclists, unfortunately, between cyclists and, um, and runners and walkers. Uh, so these signs would be great to remind folks to be courteous, not to leave trash on the trails and to be aware of their surroundings. Finally, we have uh, vision. These are the, the big things we're dreaming about. Um, these include a cycle track, Olympic style. Wouldn't that be great? Um, how about a running trail adjacent to a cycling trail? And of course, the mother of all projects, the active plan. So um, that's all that I have. Uh, thank you, um, Susanna. And Joe Lee has some comments. I want to thank Eva Garcia for um, creating this presentation. And I'll be happy to answer any questions after. Um, Jolie talks. Thank you. I just want to thank you all for um, all of this information and for presenting to us. I recently was appointed to the PID board and during one of those meetings we heard a count of how many people have actually been using that piece of the trail and as somebody who has a business that is on the trail I see every single day how many people use that to get to work, to get to town, to get to school. I mean, starting at five o'clock in the morning until late, late at night, people are using it nonstop. And one of the things I see, you know, people always comment, oh, well, you know, why do we have bike trails and why this and why that? And it's very important to support this type of infrastructure because you and I, we drive cars. But for a 14-year-old kid that needs to get to school and needs a safe passage, He's not safe on Baderes. He's not safe on a lot of our streets that don't have proper in infrastructure to protect these riders. And so it's not necessarily, you know, because people like it as a hobby, which of course they do, but I feel like it is a very important piece of infrastructure that we have to provide for our community to keep them safe and off of our streets that, you know, we're out of easement. We cannot add any more sidewalks, any more bike lanes. I mean, as it is, our infrastructure is very overwhelmed as it is. So um, I just want to thank you and remind the public why this is so important to support and cultivate and be a part of, because it is a vital piece of our community. Joe, go ahead. Hello, my name is Joe Lee Rubio, and I just want to let you all know uh, I'm thankful for being able to serve on this committee. Uh, I just finished four years on the beautification committee, and this committee gives me a, a way to get some therapy and, and to contribute, <laughs> contribute back to the city. Um, <coughs> concerning uh, the sidewalks, I, I really appreciate the efforts over the past few years on our emphasis on making sure that our new construction has sidewalks in front of it and the subdivisions have sidewalks before they're approved. That makes a big uh, dent in the sidewalks that are necessary for people to walk on safely. Uh, if we had been doing it for the last 30, 40 years, we wouldn't have a lot of the problems that we have now. But maybe I can make a suggestion. If we want to put in some sidewalks, maybe if we went half and half with a property owner to put in the sidewalks and in, in maybe some of these critical areas, some of the businesses and stuff like that. I, I know not everybody would cooperate, but you can always put a lien against the property and when it's sold, it would be paid off and you can maybe get some kind of creative financing to do sidewalks that way. And, and another thing, uh, as far as safety is concerned, I noticed downtown uh, a lot of jaywalking. And, and whenever I drive downtown, I see a mother with her kids 
in the middle of the block, going out between parked cars and crossing the street. And way back when, we used to have signs saying, jaywalking is prohibited, cross at the corner, English and Spanish in the middle of the blocks. And you know, we've never really enforced our jaywalking ordinances. And you know, we don't have to wait for a fatality to occur before we start you know, at least putting up the signage, getting people aware that they need to cross in the corners to be safe, and not teaching their kids that they, it's okay to walk between parked cars and, and cross the street. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a tragedy waiting to happen, and I hate to see that happen. So, Just a couple of suggestions, uh, my pet, pet peeves, so, so uh, you might say. But uh, thank you very much. Thank you, Joe. Appreciate sure. it. Th thank all of you for all your work, and I think I really, one of the things that I think is worth mentioning is reaching out to the community because uh, we all belong together. Okay, so I'm, thank you. I, I'm sorry. I want to thank you for what you do. It's it's um, very difficult work, but very rewarding when it comes together. I think you would agree. Certainly, the most vibrant cities are walkable and bikeable, and um, that's very important. Um, to to Commissioner Tetro's point, there were thirty thousand trips or users on the Battlefield Trail, Linear Park, and Belden Trail in the month of May. That's more traffic than some of our streets have. So what you do is very pertinent and very essential, not only for health, but for transportation and small business growth. The um, two items that stuck out to me was were the, um, the trail in, in Perkins that connects Perkins. Um, we, fa we funded the first phase of that through BCIC during my time uh, at BCIC. And um, it's my hope that it will be completed because it's a very important um, piece of infrastructure for that part of town. And second is the parking lot around uh, next to Burns. Um, that piece of dirt is filled with cars on weekends and it would be nice um, to just put some asphalt down and create an official parking lot so that people can get to and from and it can be um, more user friendly and safe. So thank you for your work and um, you have my support. Okay. Thank you guys. Uh, the next one is, I think, Ramito, 85, 85th Legislative Update. Next presentation is the 85th Legislative sure. Update. Mayor, Commissioners, um, this is a 30,000-foot uh, level, um, and just a quick glance at what we did in this past 85th Legislative Session. Um, if, if I'm talking too fast, then just slow me down, but I'm just going to go right through it. Um, as you can see, uh, in this session, there were uh, 4,300 uh, 4, bills filed and only 1,100 uh, passed. Um, and so items sent to the governor over the past 10 years uh, were at a record low. So you can see that uh, in 2015, two years ago, there was 6,000 either bills or resolutions uh, sent to the governor. This time there was uh, 4,000. Um, the primary legislative issues for the city of Brownsville as adopted by, by this commission, uh, I believe it was adopted prior to, to the election, um, but by the previous commission, uh, number one was border security and public safety, number two was workforce development and job training, number three was public transit, four was spaceport trust fund, uh, five was annexation, six is a bag ban ordinance, uh, seven is a Zika mitigation, and health issues, and number eight is the uh, LRGB Active Transportation Plan. Under border security, uh, this is what was accomplished. Uh, Senate Bill 1, which is the budget bill, uh, there was a $3 million appropriation for Cameron County, uh, and specifically uh, we're working with the Port of Brownsville on trying to get a, uh, a DPS training facility uh, uh, built in, in Brownsville, at the Port of Brownsville. Uh, SB 1805 was also related to that multi-use training and operations center. How does um, a, let me ask you, Ramiro, how does a, yes, if we have a DPS facility at the port, um, how does that help us? Uh, well, there are a lot of uh, positive things. Um, right. for, for example, um, I think right now that there's about 200 agents in the valley. Um, right now they go and they travel to train in, uh, in North Texas and then they travel back. Uh, so they stay at hotels, they stay, uh, they eat meals here, um, and, and all that all that kind of good stuff that, that we all like to see. Um, if they stay here, they stay longer here, uh, they can get trained here, 
Uh, it is a multi-use center, so the idea would be that our agents could also train there or other uh, agencies could also train there. And how come we uh, don't do it inside of the city limits? Why in the port? Uh, it's open. It's Cameron County, so it's associated to Cameron County. Uh, the, you know, they want a large piece of real estate uh, only because they want to build a driving track, they want to build a shooting range, uh, they want to build a multi-purpose training center. Uh, but I thought the port didn't give out land. Well, we, we can definitely get into details uh, you know, after, after this meeting uh, and discuss that further. Is it set at the port already? It is not set. It's Cameron County. So, Well, why aren't we fighting for it? We have land and we actually give out land. The port doesn't give out land. We, we are actually, we're, we're meeting, we have a meeting scheduled with the city manager on Thursday uh, with uh, other agencies as well. So we'll bring you, we'll bring you up to speed. Um, workforce development and job training, Senate Bill 22. Uh, established the Pathways to Technology Early College, the PTEC program, uh, and those are just kind of the details of the PTEC program. Uh, HB 108 uh, relating to the creation of Recruit Texas program, and that's uh, workforce training and workforce development uh, items. Uh, public Transit, HB 1986 uh, relating to the creation of Regional Transit Authority. Uh, this made it out of committee, uh, but it died and it made it out of the House. Uh, but it died in committee uh, in the Senate. Uh, so we will continue to work with the Chairman Martinez in the interim session. The Space Board Trust Fund, uh, this was obviously a priority. Uh, there was five million appropriated towards the Space Board Trust Fund. Um, annexation. Uh, uh, I mean, on the Space Board Fund, uh, who actually manages those funds? The, the, the governor's office. So you can see it's, uh, Article 1, trusted programs within the office of the governor. And uh, do we know if we're going to get any of that money? I believe here? I read an article yesterday that um, that Cameron County Space Board Authority received 2.6. Uh, and I think that's scheduled to become, come in, in uh, increments. Now, is there a way where we, uh, is the city allowed to tap into those funds? Or do we have to be like a space company to actually tap into it? Or can we use some of that money for infrastructure yeah, right, right. projects? I, I am, I'm not familiar with the details, but I could, I could definitely get those details. Because I know that they haven't met in a while, and I don't think they've dispersed any funds, so there must be a lot of money there. And the question is, well, maybe they could help out with some of the infrastructure, I mean, for the big projects when it comes to city and county. Absolutely. Agreed. You're talking about the space port, uh, the space corporation, the Cameron County Corporation? Yes. There has been met lately? Mm -hmm. uh, yes. I, I, all I know is what I read in, in the paper. Um, and I, and we, met, we met, la I'm, I'm on the space board. We met last week. Yes. It, it had been an awful long time okay. before we That's met again. Okay. Um, annexation, SB 468. Uh, this was a, um, a bill that was, that was uh, introduced by, by our delegation. Uh, and it passed the opt-out language. There's some, there's some other items in this, um, in this agenda uh, that start to, to work towards that uh, SB 468. Um, it, was, uh, it was a challenge to pass it, but we got it passed. Uh, some of the time, I put all the other bills, because some of the times we're not, I mean, we're playing defense. Uh, all these other bills are, were considered negative to cities, uh, which you know, would remove or reduce our annexation authority. Uh, so, you know, uh, playing defense is also, is also critical. Uh, the bag ban ordinance, uh, perhaps HB 3482, uh, this would have clarified that definition, uh, that a plastic bag is not considered a single-use container. Uh, it was in committee, it reported out of committee, but it died in the House. So, um, you know, maybe, maybe in, in the interim we can work, and in two years uh, we, we can work that again. Uh, Zika mitigation and health issues. Uh, HB 3576 passed, uh, and SB 1680 uh, relating to the uh, task force of border health officials uh, also passed. Uh, ART is, uh, has been in contact with our delegation, uh, and we're already uh, making sure that he gets appointed to that, to that board and, and we're involved. Uh, the LRGB transportation plan, uh, this, uh, this bill was amended to this bill. It was, it was on a separate bill. Um, but it, it added the definition of uh, active transportation to a venue. So uh, basically that would allow 
the hotel motel tax to be used for venue purposes or um, it it could be considered a venue so if the if the if the vote if the um, if the commission or the voters so the way that has that way that works is you have to put out the venue so let's say you want to build a convention center you say voters do you allow us to use the money for the convention center and so this would allow it could allow that um, housing so issues let so, me ask you sir. because it's municipal so who is they is that the county or is that us the city because let me ask you that's saying relating to the use of municipal ho hotel occupancy tax in certain municipalities so who actually gets to make that call so is it kind of like we as a board actually get to say well i want to use that tax for that project we're going to put out to the voters or is it more like well i'm going to county i'm going to build a venue north of x town and basically i want to use your hotel occupancy tax so the the city is allowed to go to set uh, all the way up to 17 percent right um and the county is allowed two percent of that so i believe the county passed two percent and they have some venues and they are collecting that tax um so as a city we have an additional two percent if we wanted to as a municipality now let me ask you so if we have up to 17 percent that means that we could lower we could set it anywhere we wanted to right true now let me ask you relative to the other municipalities around cameron county could you please get us what that rate is because if our rate is much higher than the island or harlingen well people are going to be staying at the island or harlingen as opposed to brownsville you see because they have, they've now added a two percent true so uh I'll, i don't have that but i'll provide it I pro I'll, I'll, I'll email it to you and then the two percent basically could be used i mean so technically the county could come and use that two percent to build the venue but i i believe the county is is limited to only two percent so they can't say i want another two percent they're so they're limited to two percent of whatever we have basically yes uh, housing issues uh, hb 1604 this was a, a good a good bill uh, that unfortunately didn't make it. it it allowed further regulation of halfway houses um, we're going to work with uh, chairman phillips to to reintroduce it in two years uh, and sb 1673 is something that you've seen uh, natural disaster housing recovery uh, this was to uh, adopt um, the vision uh, rapido project that uh, cdcb has uh, created it also passed the senate but it died in the house uh, with regards to tires, um, this was another bill, a uh, really good bill with regards to the regulation of tires. It passed the Senate, passed the House, vetoed by the governor. Um, I, I, we don't, I don't know, uh, but it was vetoed by the governor. Uh, so hopefully that bill will come up in another two years. Uh, the special session starts July 18th. Uh, there is, uh, to this point, there's only one item with the promise of another additional 19 items. Um, one of them, the first item is the sunset bill and all the other ones, this is what we're going to be watching. So, uh, item two is limit local property tax increases. Um, this is a critical item to us, limit all state and local government budget increases to meet population growth, uh, limit local over-regulation of private property rights, limiting annexation authority. So as you can see, um, there's a lot of work to be done in this special session to, to protect our interests. Um, uh, next steps, we're going to be highly engaged in the special session, uh, develop a work plan for the interim session, uh, preparing for 2019. Uh, and I'm also uh, currently working on drafting a federal agenda and having a document, uh, a cohesive document um, of all the federal, of all departments and all federal uh, opportunities, so, or federal priorities. So I'll bring that, uh, we'll bring that forward uh, once it's ready. How would you characterize the help that our, our lobbyist is in Critical. Uh, Mario's here, um, he's, and he can say a few words. Um, but it, it's, he's been absolutely critical in, in not only uh, defending our interests, uh, but also uh, opening up communication, uh, establishing networks. Uh, and it's, it's been fantastic. Y'all want to hear from Mario? No. No, I've, I've okay. got enough for me. Okay, thank you. Okay, item number four. Item number four, consent agenda items. Mayor, at this time we were asked if we can uh, get uh, item 4F, 
so that we can uh, remove it from consent agenda items so that we can have a public hearing. Motion to remove, or do we need a motion? So we can remove it from consent, yes. Motion to remove item F from consecutive yeah. agenda yeah. items. Do I hear a second? Second. second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Yeah. So you have items. So Ms. City time, Secretary, there is a list of things in the charter of, that you can put in consent item agendas. So just make sure you follow the guidelines, ma'am, because if these, these things keep coming back up on consent items, and they're not supposed to be on consent, so then we have to pull them out. So if you could just follow the guidelines, the charter is very specific on the, I think it's five things that can actually be placed on consent items. Commissioner, this, this was pulled by a uh, citizen that they wanted to speak on a behalf of, and they talked with the mayor, but it was the item, so we do operate on that guidelines. Yeah. Okay. Items number A through E. A through E. Motion to approve. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. At this time, I'd like to read uh, letter F, a public hearing on ordinance number 2017-1090-G, amending portions of section 2-26 of the city code relating to public comment. We do have... Thank you for allowing me the opportunity to speak. Um, Edgar Gaussin, Brownsville resident. Um, I just want to make sure I get this right. It is my understanding that in order to sign up for a public comment, you have to do it by 5 p.m.? Is that correct? Yes, an hour before the meeting. Hour before the meeting, okay. Um, so there's no other option, meaning sending an email or doing it through the website or anything else? I think, I think there's the ordinance simply says register with the city secretary. The city secretary yes. could allow uh, sign ups or through other ways. It just the ordinance simply says sign up through the city secretary's office by submitting a form. And by, the ordinance says it's by submitting the form. The, okay. And that form is but it doesn't online. say you could transmit the form. Uh, the, the form is provided in the in the ordinance. Um, but it doesn't say that you can't send it in by email. Okay, so we can send it in by email, we can fax it, we can... As long as the city secretary's office receives it before okay. an, hour, an hour before the meeting. Okay, my only concern is that it's going to make it very difficult for people to sign up for public comments. Okay, as it is, at 5.45, we don't... I mean, we have a few comments, but I think at 5, it's going to be very difficult for me, for example. I get out of five at work, um, and I would have to ask for a time off to sign up for the public comment. And so, I'm sorry. I think it's a terrible idea. If it's if you, it's a terrible idea if you have to be here at at five to sign up for the pu for the public comment. Now, if there are other options, that's wonderful. Okay. So, because I believe that politics should be accessible to people, and this is uh, am I understanding, Mark, though, in other words, if I have the form and I want to submit it during my noon hour on that particular day, no there's problem. nothing to prevent that from happening. Yeah, and I don't ha know how <coughs> this got misinterpreted. This is actually to become more transparent. So, I mean, all we're asking is for people to sign up because we want to have, if you were the first one to sign up, basically you're the first one to speak. Right, but my only my concern was to be here at 5. You no, can eat no, you right. Can so eat that was that. Five. That's why I wanted to get yeah, this. You five. can submit it during your noon hour. You yeah, can submit perfect. It the day that was my. That's the. That's what I didn't understand. And okay. thank you for clearing this up. So the okay. cutoff would be five o'clock. So yeah, we could add something. Anytime. We could and add something you can on do the it before five o'clock on the day of the, of the meeting. That's all. And you, you can, can do it a day in advance. Maybe we could add something to the website where people could just like go and then just click and submit it and done and show up and you're there. Thank you. Appreciate you clearing this up for me. Yes. Great. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Appreciate you coming up here. Okay, item number five. Well, we Are need we going to vote on the this one? Public oh, I'm sorry. Because it was taken off the consent agenda. We, we, we just need to close the public. Close, just close the public hearing. Motion to close public hearing. Second. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Now carries. we all can vote on it. With the amendment or? Yes. Okay, so I'd like to make a motion to amend this ordinance to also include an online registration the day of um, our meeting through via the city of Brownsville website. 
I'm sorry, Mark. Well, um, I, Commissioner, it wouldn't be a motion to amend, but, but you, I think you can move to pass the ordinance with the provision that the city secretary provides that direct, direct additional direction. So move. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Next, we have public hearing number five, public hearing in action on first reading on ordinance number 2017-1627, repealing the current chapter 26 cemeteries and replacing it, replacing it with a new chapter 26 cemeteries. Good evening, commissioners, honorable mayor. I'll be presenting the proposed chapter 26 cemeteries ordinance. The city cemetery is recognized as an outstanding historic landmark by the Texas Historical Commission and is listed on the National Register <coughs> of Historic Places. In 2012, the city entered into a memorandum of understanding with the Brownsville Historical Association, where the BHA would uh, promote the historic value of the cemetery and the city will maintain it. Recently, there has been an increase in concern over the safety and preservation of the city cemetery. This update to the ordinance addresses those concerns as well as adjusting interment fees. It includes input from several city departments, the BHA, and was approved by the Planning and Zoning Commission, the Historic Preservation and Urban Design Review Board, and the Parks and Recreation Advisory Board. These are two recent examples of the vandalism and littering that raise concern over the safety and preservation of the city cemetery. This type of activity takes away value of this 164 year old uh, cemetery that holds, holds over 30,000 individuals. Or outside in. Um, it was done by a car, so it had to be It was a joke, outside. like if somebody was getting out, so okay. <laughs> Oh, so it was somebody that did that. You see, I'm not crazy. <laughs> it looked like it, I mean. One measure this ordinance proposes to reduce harmful action to the historic cemetery is to create a code of conduct, which addresses many concerns that the city cemetery curator has expressed. Uh, it will prohibit all visitors from disrespecting persons in mourning, using profane language, trespassing after hours, possessing or consuming alcoholic beverages, depositing rubbish or debris, dis, uh, disturbing any tree, shrub, flower, or plant material, engage in any sort of solicitation of monies, display any sort of advertisement, open or tamper with a tomb, damage to face or destroy any enclosure or uh, other item of historic value. Uh, any person violating this code may be removed from the city cemetery and may be liable for a uh, $500 fee. Uh, this ordinance also proposes updating the interment fees to recover the city's labor cost. A cremains and bur uh, burial during the week would have a $75 fee. If it was after hours or on the weekends, it would be a $125 fee. Full body interments uh, fees would be $350 and $475 respectfully. These fees are based on a cremains interment taking two employees four hours and a full body interment taking two employees up to a week. Additionally, an internment certificate requires a deed. Uh, if the applicant cannot produce one, they may submit us an affidavit of airship or other means that is determined satisfactory by the city attorney, uh, but may be liable for an additional $50 fee. This ordinance will also make use of an illegal substance, trespassing after hours, or any form of vandalism on any feature of historic significance a misdemeanor. This is another concern that was expressed by several groups, and this is a, a real picture example. This update would also establish that the city cemetery is within the scope of the Historic Preservation and Urban Design Ordinance, and <coughs> therefore must comply with it. That means that all construction or altercation would require a certificate of appropriateness. Issuance of COAs uh, will follow the existing procedures set forth uh, by the Historic Preservation and Urban Design Ordinance. Um, 
<clears throat> including but not limited to standards, fees, <coughs> process, and penalties. Uh, this means if a project is within the HPO's uh, administrative uh, authority, he would issue it. If he denied it or if it was a, uh, I'm sorry, if he denied it or if it was outside of his scope, it would go to the Historic Preservation and Design Review Board. If they denied it, they may appeal it to the Planning and Zoning Commission and the final appeal would be here to the City Commission. Yes, and that is uh, according to the uh, Historic Preservation Urban Design Ordinance. Um, that is in select cases. The guard or security there? No, sir. There are cameras there, right? Isn't there a camera? Uh, I believe there's been some recent cameras that were added. Um, Mr. Uh, this is Mr. Gene Fernandez. He is uh, the city cemetery curator. I believe he's going to want to have something to say after this as well. So. Does the... the uh Area included is just the main cemetery, right? Yes, uh, the Hebrew Cemetery is not owned by the city. It is maintained by the local synagogue. And how many how many plots or spots are still available for burial? Uh, there's none up for sale. Uh, however, family members may pass it down. Uh, I believe there are two plots that can accommodate a full body interment, and the rest of most of them can accommodate an uh, interment, I mean, a cremains interment. Also, uh, just so you know, over the past 10 years, there's an average of 5.5 burials per year. Per year? Per year. <clears throat> Excuse me. Tell us about your special activities agreement, the paranormal activity group yes. gatherings. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so special activity agreements will be required for all groups of 10 or more. Uh, with the exception of groups with a funerary purpose. Uh, this agreement is to reduce the number of unaccompanied groups and reduce after-hour visits. A uh, current issue are these paranormal activity groups. Uh, these groups, as well as others, enter the city cemetery grounds after hours with little to no supervision, climb over tombs, and sometimes damage them, um, such as in this picture. Uh, by requiring a special activity <coughs> agreement, uh, there can be more supervision of these groups. Uh, currently, the Parks and Recreation Department provides general maintenance, uh, such as lawn care and tree care. This ordinance clearly states uh, that the Parks and Recreation Department will continue providing this and will not provide placement of tombstones or specialized maintenance for individual plots. Uh, though the city cemetery is currently facing vandalism and harsh conditions, it is a revered landmark in Brownsville. Uh, and your support of this ordinance will help protect and preserve it for years to come. If you have any more questions, I'll be happy to answer them. Anyone have any questions? It's a public hearing. Anybody else have any comments? Now I'll entertain the motion. I'm oh, sorry. Gene. I believe Mr. Mr. Fernandez, did you want to say something? Jesus. This marks a real milestone in terms of where this uh, cemetery has come to. Um, we began in 2003. Uh, at the first uh, City Commission meeting of that year, and Mr. Kapler was there, and uh, Mayor Trevino was the mayor at the time. We launched an effort in order to uh, uh, try to turn around the violence and, and everything that had occurred uh, to, uh, uh, to hurt our cemetery. The ordinances that we passed today that we added to city code uh, have not been amended since 1907, if you can imagine that. Of those 12, uh, 10 that were, that were passed tonight, consolidated and, and they woven in between each other, uh, only two of them were in existence in 1907, uh, drinking and after hours. And so now we've strengthened our uh, protection over the cemetery. Uh, before, we didn't have a, a book to work by. Uh, on these particular points that fell through the cracks, how could we arrest anyone? How could we prosecute? How could we find anyone? because there wasn't a, a strict law that dealt with these issues. Now we are uh, um, amongst the living, so to speak. Uh, uh, I've questioned the, the format of the various cities like uh, New Orleans, Mobile, uh, uh, all of the places where there are classic cemeteries in order to mold these ordinances in keeping with what 
is national standard. And so now Brownsville is up to national standard. I thank you very much. And planning department was an immense help in this. And uh, I know that the makeup of the city commission at this point in time and mayor uh, is, uh, is wholeheartedly on board of preserving that cemetery. And my heart goes out to you. Aye. 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 Oh wait, wait, did we have to close public comment? Oh, that was. Oh, that's what it was. Oh. To, to close Motion to approve. Comment. Okay. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Item number six. Public hearing and action on first reading on ordinance number 2017-235.86, amending existing boundaries within the 033 non-apartment overlay district map and dealing with related matters. Uh, commissioners, Honorable Mayor, uh, this city initiated ordinance proposes amending the existing boundaries of this 033 non-apartment overlay. The, the overlay was adopted in 1995. Uh, it restricts the development of apartments, duplexes, boarding houses, lodging houses, recreational vehicle parks, and mobile homes. <laughs> Besides restricting this development, the overlay has no other effect and each property must comply with its base dwelling, uh, sorry, base use district and area district. Okay, this is the current boundaries of the 033 non-apartment overlay with the areas that are proposed to be removed marked in red. I'll go through each area separately. Uh, <clears throat> this area proposes removing the overlay uh, at the Brownsville Country Club on Jose Marti Boulevard. We're asking the commissioners to remove the overlay since these properties are currently zoned for apartments, as you can see in this map. What area would that be? Uh, this is the Brownsville Country Club. Uh, this is 802, 80, sorry. Oh. What area were you're requesting to remove the overlay? I'm sorry, what was that, sir? The area where you're re requesting to remove the overlay. Uh, the it yellow? is the subject property in red hash. Yep. This is the intersection of Price Road um, and Port Isabel Road near St. Luke's and Hannah Early College High School. Okay. We're asking the commission to remove this area from the overlay uh, since it is a developed area that includes a few apartments and duplexes and many of the surrounding areas uh, our apartments. <coughs> it's uh, currently zoned dwelling in 2C and the area is F. Okay. This area of the overlay is on Central Avenue just north of Cadler Park. Uh, the property on the east side of Central Avenue was removed from the 033 in 2013 and currently has apartments. Uh, we're asking the 033 be removed from this area. Central, Ave Central Avenue is a mix of single-family dwellings, multifamily dwellings, and commercial businesses. Uh, and here you can see that it is zoned 1C. This area is also uh, has submitted a written protest of 13 point, I'm sorry, 15.32% of the property in question. Let me ask you, isn't that one of the areas that we've actually, we've rezoned? Have we voted on some of these lately? That area specifically? Uh, this area specifically? Um, I think, uh, I'm not certain. Okay. This was the last area. So okay, you. so you're, you're looking to uh, amend the existing boundaries of, of, of this 033, okay? Yes. Does anybody here have any comments? Will the, if not, I'll entertain a motion to close the public hearing. Motion to close. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion Perfect. carries. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you. Item number seven. Public hearing number seven. Public hearing in action on first reading on ordinance number 2017 235.87, 
repeating the current section 348-1043 entertainment downtown Bronco entertainment district of chapter 348 article 4 overlay districts and replacing it with a new section 348-1043 downtown overlay Dr district good evening honorable mayor and city commission um, in an effort to reduce vacancy and encourage entrepreneurial environment we are proposing to repeal the downtown Brownsville Entertainment Overlay District and replace it with the downtown Overlay District. The purpose of the downtown Overlay District is to encourage uses that will transform downtown Brownsville into a hub for working, living, shopping, and entertainment, encourage infill development, adaptive reuse of older buildings, and mixed use and mixed income development, incentivize uses such as retail, arts, entertainment, and residential uses by waiving applicable building and zoning fees, and expand business and job opportunities, and foster increased activity and public safety. Um, the current ENT boundaries include at Market Square and a portion of Adams Street, and we'd like to um, increase those boundaries to include East Fronton, East 6th Street, East Jackson Street and Inter International Boulevard. And in order to safeguard the residential areas that would be adjacent to this downtown overlay district, uh, we would like to restrict all the entertainment uses um, to the area that's demarcated in blue, and it includes the original ENT um, overlay boundaries. The general requirements for the downtown overlay district will call for applicants to comply with all applicable building and business regulations in addition to all occupancy, occupancy and zoning requirements. Establishments shall make necessary and reasonable efforts to discourage criminal activity and vandalism, properly maintain the facade and ensuring that the property <coughs> remains in good condition and maintain exterior grounds in a safe, sanitary, and clean condition. The city may regulate noise levels more strictly if it appears that noise conditions will adversely affect other businesses or residents in the district. Uh, bars located within 200 feet of a school shall operate no earlier than two hours after a school has been dismissed, and this provision shall only apply when a school is in session and it doesn't um, ap apply to wet establishments. Historic preservation is a key component of downtown revitalization. Therefore, establishments shall comply with all historic preservation and urban design requirements, including all requirements needed to secure a certificate of appropriateness and a release letter from the mainstream manager will be required um, to issue a certificate of, an, of appropriateness. So permitted uses within the downtown overlay district that we would incentivize will include retail and service uses such as an antique store, a barber shop, or a drug store, arts and arts related uses such as a dance school, photo studio, or theater, and entertainment uses such as a wet restaurant, coffee house, or bar. Um, some of the prohibited uses include blood or plasma centers, gambling arcades, payday lenders, uh, new privately owned parking facilities, and the sale of building materials. This concludes my presentation. I'll be happy to answer any questions. Just public hearing, any comments? Now I'll entertain a motion to close public comment. Motion. Move. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. I'll move to adopt. Approve. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you. Item number eight. Item number eight, public hearing and action on first reading on <coughs> ordinance number 235-2017-039-CO to rezone from professional office G to apartments H for 1.895 acres for abstract two of Ruiz subdivision reserve located at 3215 West Alton Good evening, Honorable Mayor, uh, City Commissioners. This is a request to rezone uh, a 1.89 acre property uh, to apartment H. The applicant is, is proposing to build uh, between 35 to 40 units at this property. This property is located on uh, 3215 West Alton Bloor. The property is located within the town corridor and it's uh, supported by the future land use plan. 
This is the, uh, the existing uh, uses or surrounding uses for this property. As you can see, we have mainly single family homes. Uh, we have a duplex subdivision across the street, but it's, pretty, uh, but it's primarily residential. Uh, this is the, the one of the, uh, the front of the property. Uh, here's a proposed render of the development. Uh, they're gonna be apartments again. And so this case was originally uh, protested uh, when we actually sent out the notices the first time for the Planning and Zoning Commission. The, uh, the main, uh, the most uh, vocal opponent uh, was the neighbor on the back. He, uh, we, we did a little mediation between um, you know, the neighbors, the owner, we sat down with them. And so that person, he no longer opposes uh, because we came together and did a CO for this, for this property. Uh, so we basically have a list of conditions that need to be met and just to kind of keep the, the residential appearance and privacy uh, on, the, on the rear. And so PNC has recommended to support uh, the rezoning uh, with a conditional use overlay. And so I'm just, um, the, ones, the conditions listed are just some of the conditions that we, that we added to the CO. Okay, this is public, public hearing. Any comments on this, on this issue? Not only paying a motion to close. Motion to close, public hearing. Second. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Is there a motion to approve? Motion, motion to approve. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Item number nine. Public hearing number nine. Public hearing in action on first reading on ordinance number 235-2017-042 <coughs> to rezone from apartment G to general retail G for 1.57 acres out of 28.94 acres of Espirito Santo Grant Share 12 located near the intersection of Morrison and Laredo Road. Uh, so for this application, the, uh, the owner is requesting to rezone to General Vito G. This property is located on Laredo Road and near Morrison Road. The um, proposed use uh, was not mentioned, but it's some sort of a commercial uh, business. The property is located within the Transition West uh, District and is supported, or the proposed use is supported by the future land use plan. Uh, here's the, uh, the, the surrounding uses for this property. Um, Again, we have a, a, it's pretty much single family homes and some vacant uh, land. And so PNC has recommended to support the rezoning to General Rito G. No written opposition. No written opposition. Okay, uh, public hearing, uh, any, any comments? Motion to close the public hearing. Second. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Is there a motion? Motion to approve. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Next public item. hearing number 10, public hearing in action on first reading ordinance number 235-2017-043 to rezone from dwelling A to apartment G for 1.63 acres for lot one, block one of Ryan subdivision located on East Rubin M. Torres Boulevard. So for this case, the applicant is requesting to rezone to apartment G. This uh, property is located on FM 802 uh, near BICC. The number of units as proposed, uh, approximately 18 units. The future land use plan supports uh, the proposed use. And here's an area of the surrounding uses. Uh, we have uh, the BICC on the right. We have a couple um, of mobile homes and, um, and apartments as well, and residential. Uh, here's the, the lot in question. And so here's a render of the proposed development and the front or the, the elevation, the front elevations. And so PNC has recommended to support the reason to apartment G. Again, no written opposition. No written opposition. Motion to close public hearing. Second. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Motion to approve. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Next item. Public hearing number 11, public hearing in action on first read on ordinance number 235-2017-044 to rezone from general retail G, medium retail G, to dwelling G for 0 0.63 acres for lot one, block one of Aladez subdivision, and for 4.36 4 acres for reserve of Aladez subdivision located at 4865 Paredes Line Road. So this is a rezone uh, application uh, to rezone to dwelling G. This property is located uh, on Paredes Line Road, and the proposed use is a duplex subdivision. 
Uh, the front, as you can see, is, is currently uh, light retail. And so they're intending on, on keeping the light retail and the, the four seat on the front so they can put businesses. And then the back, it's going to be a, a duplex subdivision, which is, uh, will be single family, um, I'm sorry, dwelling. Uh, the future land use plan supports the proposed uh, use. And here's uh, the existing land use map uh, and the surrounding uses. It's a little bit of a mix. We have uh, um, some uh, commercial or general retail properties and uh, single family homes. PNC has uh, recommended to support the rezone. Uh, and so the four acres will be whatever's on the back. And so to rezone that to dwelling G. Anyone here on public questions? comment? If not, I'll entertain a motion to close. Motion to close public hearing. Second. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Motion to approve. Second. All those in favor? Aye. aye. Motion carries. Next public, item. Public hearing number 12. Public hearing in action on first reading on ordinance number 235-2017-045 to rezone from general retail G to general retail J for the south 4.3 acres out of 13.63 acres of Espiritu Santo Grand Share 22 located near the intersection of Paredes Line Road and Heritage Trail. So this, this item and the next item, they're for the same uh, location. There's uh, currently two, there are two uh, tax credit applications on this site, uh, one for senior housing, the other one for mixed income housing. So um, they are currently requesting to rezone to uh, General Rito J, uh, so in order for them to comply with the density or have the density that they want. This property is located on Paredes Line Road. And so the future land use plan supports the proposed use. Here's the area of the subject property. As you can see, Idea School is uh, on, one of the, on one of the sites and, and the remaining existing uses are primarily dwelling and a little bit of a retail. Uh, here's the, uh, the property. And so PNC has recommended to support the rezone to General Rito J. Okay. Yes. Public comment? Anyone here on this one? If not, I'll entertain a motion to close. Motion to close public hearing. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Is there a motion, motion to approve? Motion to approve. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Next item. Public hearing number 13. Public hearing in action on first read on ordinance number 235-2017-045-S to allow apartments in a general retail J for the south 4.3 acres out of 13.63 acres of Espiritu Santo Grand Share 22 located near the intersection of Paredes Line Road and Heritage Trail. And so again, this is the same location. This is the specific use permit to allow the apartments at this location. Uh, because of the annexation year, uh, apartments are not allowed uh, in 4C. So that's why they are requesting a specific use. Uh, the future land use plan supports the proposed rezoning. And so again, here's an area of the property and the surrounding uses. Uh, here's the proposed uh, site plan. And so it will be 128 units approximately. And it's going to be four stories. And so PNC has recommended to approve the specific use permit to allow apartments. Public hearing. Anyone here on this one? If not, I'll entertain a motion to close public hearing. Motion to close public hearing. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Is there a motion to approve? Motion to approve. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Next item, please. Public hearing number 14. Public hearing in action on first reading on ordinance number 235-2017-046 to rezone from general <coughs> retail G to general retail J for the north 4.3 acres out of 13.63 acres of Espiritu Santo Grant share 22 located near the intersection of Paredes Line Road and Heritage Trail. So again, this is, these are two applications for the same location, but this is only on the north side um, of 4.3 acres on the north side of the lot. Um, their, their, their request is to rezone to General Rito J, um, again, to allow for the density. And so the future land use plan supports the proposed rezoning. Um, and so PNC is recommending to approve the rezone. Generito G to Generito J. Okay. Motion to close public hearing. Is there, is there anyone here for a public hearing? Okay, if not, go thank, uh, got a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Is there a motion, motion to, to approve? approve? Second. No, I'm, I can't make the motion. <laughs> uh, motion to approve. Second. <laughs> All those in favor say aye. 
Aye. Motion carries. I, next item, 15. Public hearing number 15, public hearing in action on first reading on ordinance number 235-2017-046-S to allow apartments in a general retail J for the north 4.3 acres out of 13.63 acres of Espiritu Santo grant, share 22 located near the intersection of Paredes Line Road and Heritage Trail. And so this is the specific use uh, permit application that accompanies the rezoning that we just, uh, that we do, just approved. Uh, it's to allow apartments in general retail J. The future land use plan supports the proposed rezoning. And so here's a, the site plan for the property and they're proposing 132 units, also four stories. And so PNC is recommending to support the specific use permit. Anyone here on this issue? If not, I'll entertain a motion to close public hearing. Motion to close public hearing. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Motion to approve. Second. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Item number 16. Public hearing number 16. Public hearing in action on resolution number 2017-042, reaffirming the establishment of the West Morrison Road Public Improvement District in the city of Brownsville and dealing with related matters. Good evening, honorable mayor, members of the commission. This resolution reaffirms the establishment of the Pitt um, District, originally adopted in 2011 by resolution 2011-032. There is a significant time lapse between the adoption and the initial assessment and the actual completion of the construction, which happened last year. Um, this is uh, part of the reason why, the, why this um, reaffirming is happening tonight. In a sense, it will also serve as a final report on the original engineer's estimated amount of $3,687,006.20 and the official construction costs um, were the final, which were $4,016,524. Um, I'll entertain any questions. Okay, this is this public, is public hearing. hearing. Any, any questions? You close. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Motion to approve. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank, Thank you. you. Public Next, comment. Next, we have public comment period. At this time, I'd like to let you know we do have five people that have signed up.
So um, the implementation of SB4 has already had an impact and will have an immediate impact on all community, all families um, in the community of Brownsville. And we invite you to further have talks about those effects if need be. Um, but your coming out in support of litigation against SB4 will mean that there's a true representation of the needs of a border community. Um, we know that, that other uh, cities have already come out in um, support of litigation against SB4, and we hope that Brownsville um, takes you know, the initiative and takes also part of the lead in, in representing the community. So basically our ask today is that our Brownsville City Commission take the initiative to place this hopefully as an action item on our next agenda or our next commission report agenda to see, to, to come out and, and see if we can support and um, uh, support our community. Our organizations represented here um, include Lupe, La Unión de Colombia, include ACLU, include the Equal Voice Network, Movimiento del Valle, Fuerza del Valle. A lot of us organize, and if I left anybody out, I'm sorry. Um, also, we have representatives here of the LGBT community, of, of um, Planned Parenthood Texas Votes. A lot of organized efforts um, are here in support um, uh, in support of the Brazos City Commission, and we're here to support you and also provide information every step of the way if you need so. So again, my name is Gabriel Sawa, and I do represent the community as well as the Equal Voice Network. We are looking forward to further talks, and hopefully it will end in a victory for the city of Brownsville and for the community. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. I would suggest that you would submit something in writing as to the groups that are involved and submit it to the city secretary so that they can disseminate to the entire commission. So I appreciate it very much. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank Thank you. Next we have Juan uh, Alada. <laughs> Buenas tardes. Buenas tardes. Estimados comisionados, mi nombre es Juana Lara y vivo en el área de Salvo. Soy miembro activa de ARPU de Texas y de la red de voces iguales. Amo y creo mucho en la capacidad de mi comunidad, por eso trabajé activamente en organizar la participación cívica en mis vecinos del precinto 77. Trabajé casa por casa para animarlos a salir a votar en todas las elecciones pasadas. Aprecio su esfuerzo de trabajar para nuestra comunidad. Hoy en día en, en nuestro país, pero sobre todo en nuestra región. Las fuentes sentimentales y acciones ante nosotros y ante nuestras comunidades han logrado no solo perturbar la paz de nuestras familias, que incluye a nuestros hijos, ya que nos hacen sentir como que todo lo que sucede es nuestra culpa. Como ustedes saben, esto no es cierto. Somos gente honrada, trabajadora, ciudadanos, residentes, trabajadoras, pero una democracia y por eso promuevo la participación cívica, pero también esperamos que alguien de ustedes tome una postura más fuerte, algo que responda en realidad el odio que nos echan en la cara. Apreciamos el liderazgo de aquel alcalde del Cenizo, de los condados de Travis y El Paso y los demás electos que están tomando posturas claras, fuertes, a favor de la comunidad. Les invito a ustedes a entrar a un diálogo más profundo con nosotros. Gracias. Gracias. Next we have Ophelia Alonso. different organizations that fight for social justice. And so um, we're also all lifelong residents of Brownsville, Texas. Um, so we thank you for allowing us to make <coughs> some public comments today. Um, so we're here to talk about SB4. SB4, as you know, is a racist law fueled by hate. And as members who work in the community, primarily among people who are six, ages 16 to 26, 
we see that this is not only an issue for our older residents, but also for our young community. Um, so what we're asking you is we're, we're urging you to take a public position against this law. Um, also, also, as organizations that work with healthcare, we're urging you to declare opposition for the healthcare of our community. Brownsville is one of the two places in the entire county that has a Planned Parenthood clinic, and it's one of the only places where undocumented people can go get healthcare services. And so we're advocating for this, not only for them to feel comfortable in our clinics, but also outside our clinic, on their way to the clinic, and the way that they are able to raise their families. Um, so. We've been fortunate enough to be present at most of the SB4 rallies in Austin and here and in San Antonio. We were there, we testified against it, and it's been made very clear that Texans, especially us in the RGB, are against SB4. Coming home, all we've seen and heard is opposition from all of our supporters against SB4 because we understand that not only will this affect people personally, but it will affect their friends, family, and community in regards to their education, access to health care, and on top of the other laws that are going against the LGBTQ community. And so we're urging you um, to put SB4 on the agenda, to join the litigation, and if not, to submit an amicus brief. Um, and for the very least, submit a public statement that you are against SB4 because mm -hmm. you're here to represent our community, which again has overwhelmingly spoken out against SB4. Um, so again, not only is this an immigration issue, this is a healthcare issue, this is an LGBTQ issue, um, especially here in an area where not only do we have police to worry about, campus police, ICE, Border Patrol, and this is something that we don't want here in our community. We don't want over-militarization, and we want a safe community just as it was without the racist, white supremacist, bills that are being passed in Austin, so thank you. Well, thank you, and again, I, I urge you to submit something in writing as to the people that y'all represent, and submit it to there so that the entire commission can imbue with the, the support that's being given. So thank you for being here, thank you. Okay, the next. Individual consideration action item number 18 consideration and action to appoint two members to the Brownsville Community Improvement Corporation. Good evening, honorable mayor and commission. Uh, we're here today, Rebecca Castillo with the Brownsville Community Improvement Corporation. Uh, we have two vacancies to our former uh, commissioners, are no longer serving at the BCAC board, and we're here with you all to uh, seek an appointment of two new board members. You have your current board members, Mr. Celestino Villarreal, Anissa Gonzalez, Everardo Galvan, Felicia Frua Edge, and Jesus de la Yata. And we have uh, four new applications, applicants seeking the appointments, Jose Antonio Escobedo, Carlos H. Cisneros, Graham Xavier Schultz, and Carlos Garza. So we're here to ask for your appointments. I would like to make a motion to appoint Commissioner Munguia. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you. Very good. Congratulations. We need one more member. One more. Okay, one you more. need one, one more. Uh, I move to appoint uh, Mr. Graham Severe. Second. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you, Commissioners. Thank now you me. have your two. Yes. Thank you. Ready to go work. Next, we have action item number 19, consideration and action on resolution number 2017-035 to execute an advanced funding agreement between the City of Brownsville and the Texas Department of Transportation regarding the Brownsville Bicycle Pedestrian Safety Improvements. <clears throat> uh, good evening, Honorable Mayor and members of the City Commission. Um, I'm here today for your consideration and action on resolution number 2017-35. Um, um, as a little background, not too long ago, the City of Brownsville received $240,642 in Transportation Alternative Program Funds, also known as TAP Funds. Um, for construction of the B Brownsville Bike Pedestrian Safety Improvements Project. Um, sorry. The governing body of the local government must enter an advanced funding agreement by resolution with the Texas Department of Transportation in order to make use of federal funds. The Bike Ped Safety Improvements Projects include medians, crosswalk improvements, and sidewalk improvements to Boca Chica Boulevard, Ruben M. Torres Boulevard, and Alton Glore Boulevard. This is the existing condition at the intersection of the historic Battlefield Trail and Boca Chica. Um, it forces cyclists and pedestrians to cross seven lanes of vehicular traffic um, without a refuge island or safe barrier um, if you didn't make the crossing in one light. 
Um, these are the proposed safety improvements. Um, we would like to add a median to create a safe space to stop and add sidewalks to improve connectivity in the area. Um, here's a rendering of those proposed improvements. Um, here's the current condition on Ruben M. Torres. As you can see, there's a bike lane, um, or you might be aware, in front of the Red Lobster. It dead ends. It forces cyclists to merge with traffic or to get onto the grass. Um, the proposed safety improvements will add a median, um, will, I'm sorry, will add a side path to get the cyclists safely um, from the bike lane to the underpass. It also helps um, pedestrians. We're adding um, additional sidewalks also for the connectivity of the pedestrians in the area. Um, are, the, are the restaurants going to give you space or where are you going to fit the bike lane and the sidewalk on everything? Um, there's, a, there's some right-of-way space, so we'll be working with the engineers to design that and work um, around that. And where is, okay, because uh, that place gets really, it gets jam-packed. Right. No, and there's some traffic, tech dot right-of-way there, I believe. If, if uh, traffic is also working on it, I mean, they're trying to sync all those lights. Oh, sorry. So I think it's important not only that these improvements <coughs> are done, the thing is you need to sync them with the traffic lights. Yes, we'll because be working with TxDOT, um, the traffic department, and engineers to work on that. Yeah, because we already have a big traffic jam, so we don't want to have more traffic and then have it a biking accident. Because remember, all those people that are making that hard right, I mean, they're not stopping. So if you have a cyclist, <coughs> I mean, they're going to run somebody over. No, certainly, and that's why we want to, um, you know, remove the dead end and create somewhere for cyclists and pedestrians to go. While you're talking to TxDOT, you might want to bring up, if we're going to make that a bike trail, maybe um, the possibility of revisiting and maybe through BCIC the, the possibility of putting colored lights under the expressway. I think that would be a really cool thing to add for our bikers. Yes, definitely the underpass. And drivers areas. and people. Okay, will do. Um, here's some um, current existing conditions and then what the rendering proposes to do. So as you can see, there <coughs> is some right-of-way space, um, but we'll definitely be working in a tight space. If this I may, is, if I may how come those lights have, were never placed underground? I, I, I don't know the answer to that question. I'm sorry. Yeah, Would you have to know, Mr. Singh? What, what was the question? Uh, how come we never used uh, underground uh, lighting or uh, underground uh, the wiring for like the electric, the, you see the light posts, the electrical posts, the utility poles? Oh. I mean, how come they were, there's never been a plan to actually put them underground, especially on? To my knowledge, I don't, I don't know. Well, that, that's something we are initiating at Market Square and have proposals for the airport, but obviously this is, something that's been done for decades for, since the creation of electricity and I guess it's the least expensive way to do things but obviously that's something that's being worked on and <coughs> evolved for future <coughs> we're still in the planning phases so it, it would might be a good idea to have those discussions with PUB yeah, while we're, if we, we put them under you'd have more space exactly yeah. okay those are and that way you could actually have a nice things. sidewalk all the way to the mall yeah I love see. that idea oh that would be cool I love that idea. Um, sorry. <clears throat> this is the existing condition on Alton Glor and the historic battlefield trail. It's similar to Boca Chica, except instead of seven lanes, there are five lanes. Um, the speed limit here is faster. There's obviously not that intersection on frontage. Um, so the proposed improvements do um, propose a median, a refuge island, uh, to create a safe crossing. And here's a existing condition and this is what the proposal the proposed improvements are recommending so as you can see um, all of these improvements will not only create safe crossing areas for pedestrians and cyclists <coughs> clearly defining spaces on major thoroughfares but they will also enhance connectivity I'm happy to answer any questions you may have at this time. That's um, kind of, I'm sorry go ahead that's a funky light place also Robert when I'm on when I'm crossing going south I always seem to get stuck unawares by another car coming one way. I don't know. Maybe you want to look at that. I also want to thank um, – I didn't mean for you to answer it right now. Just check it out. But I also wanted to thank you for working with our state tech stop rep, Terry, who um, was very instrumental in helping us to design these and bundle them as one so that we could win the award. Right. This, um, these locations were identified when Terry came to visit us, and she was looking at the – the area and where the safety concerns were for the state. And of course, those same concerns um, exist for us as a city. I was gonna, could you go back to the Red Lobster, that one, and put back to the, 
to the one in front of the red lobster. You just this, this is it. This yeah, is the. If Ruby you go Club. back to the proposed one, the next slide. I've okay. actually seen some no. get hit there, and it gets very graphic. So make sure you do that correctly. I, I think we need to point out that those people are riding on a sidewalk, and if you're going to make some kind of easement there or something, that it should be a full, I mean, like a, a bike lane, because if we're going to start encouraging people to bike, we need to do it legally, which is does not include riding on sidewalks. Well, I believe that's a multi-use path. Right. In the rendering, it looks very <coughs> narrow, um, but what we would be proposing or, tr or trying to fit in would be a side path similar to the one on Morrison. So um, sidewalks that tend to be larger than 8 feet, 8 to 12 or 14 feet even sometimes, are multi-use. Uh, sidewalks narrower than 8 feet are meant for pedestrians only. Um, but the ones like on Morrison, on University Boulevard, those, University Boulevard, I'm sorry, are meant for multi-use, both cyclists and pedestrians. So and these are legally allowed, right? Yes, Correct. that's a because NACDO, extra wide. Um, the National Association of City Transportation mm -hmm. Officials, um, they all have guidelines for that. Okay. And if I want to, I want to bootstrap on Judge Nice's a comment. You see what happens is like on 6 and 7, when we built the bike lane, mm -hmm. it reduced one lane. So really, when we don't have any traffic, it's not an issue. But sometimes, like around 5, Major 8 in the morning, right. believe me, I got calls from half of the courthouse when those things started going up. Oh, right. So, uh, so this is actually a major thoroughfare. I mean, it's, I mean, the major street. So the thing is, I mean, and I'm instructing the city manager, you are not going to reduce the car lanes. I mean, we're not reducing the car we're lanes. We're not touching them. Because the traffic already is really bad there. So I mean, if we can work something around it by I mean, putting those utility posts underground or something else, I'm okay with it, but I will tell you, I don't think it's fair because it's already a congested area. And if we do that to the people, I mean, I understand I'm a cyclist, I like to walk, I like to ride my bike, but believe me, that intersection is not the place to reduce a uh, street lane. I don't so believe you're, in, you're intending to reduce it. She's There's no intention yeah. to reduce it. We're going to be working with the right-of-way that exists um, from the it curb. It it's a state highway, so uh, they're not going to agree they're, to yeah, anything the, like that. The, the Texas Department of Transportation will That doesn't involve reducing that. a lane. Okay. Um, but, but, of course, we agree. I'm, my whole family would call me, too. We proposed, <laughs> that, we proposed that that road be wider when, they, when it was redesigned because we knew we were going to have a huge amount of traffic there. But what you have there is what we got. I don't remember ever approving those black seal things on 7th Street, but we can talk about that later. Oh, the armadillos? Yeah. Those are beloved. We get, I get calls all the time asking for them in more places. I get calls from them. What the hell are they doing there? So we'll talk about it later. <laughs> okay. Um, all right. Eva, one, no. more, one more question. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I know it's late. Um, is it possible to bundle, or maybe it's too late, the, the parking lot, small parking lot on Alton Bloor in these projects? Since you're gonna, in, since we will be improving that crossing at Alton Glor at the same time, um, that's something that we can bring up with TxDOT and that we can discuss um, amending the proposed um, okay. to include the parking lot if that's what uh, we wish. Definitely can look at that. Okay, this is an action item. Please, please don't forget my Christmas lights under the expressway. I will talk to TxDOT tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> action item. This is this is we, we could be here forever. Motion to approve. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Item, item number you. 20. Action item number 20, consideration action to adopt budget amendment resolution number 2017-036 to amend the general fund revenues and expenditures budget to amend the budget for additional expenditures. Oh. Good evening, Honorable Mayor. Wait a minute. You, you moved the... Sorry. 21. I was still reading. Sorry. To amend the general fund revenues and expenditures budget and to amend the budget for additional expenditures and revenues in the bridge fund and employee benefit fund. Good evening, uh, Mayor and Commissioners. Today I'm going to present a budget amendment for consideration and approval. I'll briefly go over the items. If you have any questions, I'll ask as best I can. The first item is to equip uh, fire engine number two uh, that, that was uh, approved uh, in the amount of $157,000. Second item is to uh, fund, uh, to provide funding for roof repairs <coughs> for several uh, fire department stations in the amount of $175,000. The third item is uh, to fund uh, three uh, equipments for parks department in the amount of $187,000. Next item would be to equip the animal clinic in the amount of $15,000. 
Uh, next item would be uh, janitorial supplies for the animal controls. Uh, there's an increase in the services <coughs> requirement, $13,000. Uh, this uh, next item is a, a request to transfer uh, $1,500,000 to the employee uh, benefit fund. The reason for this uh, fund is uh, in order to keep the fund in the blank, we've had an increase in the medical expenses and we need these funds in order to make sure that the fund is adequately funded. Uh, the next one is to just uh, budget amendment just to adjust the sales tax projections down to uh, an amount of one, one $1,400,000. And then we're also, in order to minimize the effect on the general fund budget, we're requesting to transfer an additional $1,600,000 from the bridge fund. Uh, that fund has adequate funds to, to make this transfer. I recommend... Uh, yes, sir. How come you're fixing the roof on all these uh, fire stations, but the roof at the police station is leaking? Well, right now. Can't, I mean, can I just say I want to amend and add 50000 so they can actually fix the roof? I Do mean, you walk into the court and it's, there's, it's, I mean, it's flooded. I mean, you walk in in the mornings and you have your roof is leaking. And the court? Which court? The municipal court, sir, at the police station. I mean, they have some leaks at PD. And I was there the other day and, uh, I mean, I saw all the leaks. So, I mean, I'm just saying if we're going to fix some of our fire stations, I think we should fix our main police station also. Well, that's that's absolutely. But, but that I think we have the funding in place for that already. We're working. We we got the funding in place for police. We, now we're going to do it for. We're going to eventually have to ask for funding for this building, and things for that are occurring one, here. Yeah. And we're we've got the funding for uh, city hall on on the agenda as well for the roof and their interior work. So um, once it rains, we start realizing we have leaks. You're right. So if you can, Mr. Gonzalez, if you could just uh, follow through with the police department to make sure that the funding is in place. Like, uh, and, uh, like absolute. Please. Okay, this is item number 20, uh, action item. <coughs> Motion to approve. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Item number 21. Action, action item number 21, consideration action on resolution number 2017-037 of the City of Brownsville, Texas, suspending the July 20, 2017 effective date of the Statement of Intent of the Texas Gas Service Company to increase rates within incorporated areas of its service territory to permit the City's time to study the request and to establish reasonable rates. Findings that the City's reasonable rate case expenses shall be reimbursed by the company, authorizing <coughs> participation with the Rio Grande Valley, Texas municipalities, hiring legal and consulting services to negotiate with the company and direct any necessary litigation and appeals. Finding that the meeting at which this resolution is passed is open to the public as required by law, requiring notice of this resolution to the company and legal counsel. Uh, Mayor and members of the commission, on June 15, 2017, uh, the Texas Gas Service filed a, a rate increase with the state of Texas, giving notice that they wish to increase gas rates by 18.5%. Uh, under the law, uh, we have a certain amount of time, in this case, it's until July 20th, 2017, uh, to file, uh, to pass a resolution. The effect of this resolution stays that rate increase for 90 days and gives us time to basically negotiate with Texas Gas Service and to examine uh, their applications to make sure they comply with the law, and if they do comply with the law, to negotiate with them a reasonable rate with the Valley. Uh, we, in the past, what we've done is we've combined, joined forces with McAllen and other Valley cities, hired one law firm that specializes with us, and in the past, Texas Gas Service has always had to pay our legal fees, so it doesn't cost us anything to do it. Um, but I, I would strongly advise you to pass this resolution uh, to prevent that uh, rate increase from occurring for, for in, and give us a chance to negotiate it down for our, their, for our, our people. What do we, uh, Texas Gas Services, what does the city utilize this gas service for, or what, what, how does it affect us? I, I know it, it affects the rate players within the city. I don't, I don't whether the city actually gas. buys gas. It's I, consumer I, I, gas, right? It's what consumer, they get yeah, in we're talking about consumers. Their stoves or whatever. Within the city. So this would affect uh, anyone in the city of Brownsville, but also McAllen, Mercedes, Mission, Palm Valley, Paul Hurst, basically all the cities in the valley. Anybody who was purchasing gas from Texas Gas Service would face an 18.5% rate increase. Was this uh, our resolution would, uh, would stay it for the people within the city of Brownsville. Now let me ask you, Mark, is this uh, for all over the state or they just wanted to give us a rate increase down here? Uh, I, I don't know. I, I, I would assume that they're filing rate increases throughout the state. Uh, this yeah, particular filing 
just dealt with us, but but I, I would assume they're doing this. They, the only thing is that it comes out regionally, and they made a presentation to the Lower Rio Grande Valley, and one of the reasons why, you know, like PUB, we we, we authorize them to do the go into the gas business, quite frankly, but at this particular point, that's just something we have to take a look at down the road. Anyway, it's just a good motion. I mean, it's a good a good thing to do. To give us some time. Uh, motion to approve. Second. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Item number 22. Action item number 22, consideration and action on resolution number 2017-038 of the City of Brownsville, Texas, finding that the cal calculation of its extraterritorial jurisdiction pursuant to the Texas Local Government Code 42.0235 is not in the city's best interest and electing to calculate the City of Brownsville extraterritorial jurisdiction pursuant to the Texas Local Government Code 42.021. Previous interlocal agreements as adopted by the City of Brownsville and the City of Los Fresnos and dealing with related matters. All right, um, Mayor and members of the Commission, the comments I'm going to make are actually going to be directed toward uh, the history behind the next three agenda items. Uh, the next three agenda items are uh, resolutions. Uh, one is with uh, Los Fresnos, the second is with Bayview, and the third is with Indian Lake. And, and here's the history behind it. Uh, basically, most every city in the state of Texas calculates their extraterritorial jurisdiction by Texas Local Government Code 42021. Um, 15 years ago, 16 <laughs> years ago, Brownsville engaged in a series of annexations uh, which were challenged by some of the neighboring cities. Uh, that wasn't because of anything this commission did or anyone here. These were things that were done a long time ago. All of the actions that Brownsville took 15 years ago were legal, okay? Um, and, and the, the, but there were a lot of challenges that were, that were made at the time, all right? As a result of that, and there were a series of negotiations over several legislative sessions, and, and Mary, you, you were involved in them as well. Um, in 2015, uh, the state legislature passed a bill that carved out a special rule just for Brownsville. And it said Brownsville must calculate its, its CTJ under 420235, and what basically that did is it created a two-mile buffer around every city north of Brownsville and said, all right, Brownsville, you can, your ETJ can't extend within two miles of any of these cities. What that effectively did, it prevented the city of Brownsville from growing at all because we had all these interlocking uh, buffer areas north of town. Do you so, recall who the sponsor of that bill was? Uh, I, I, I think it was our delegation. Specifically? Uh, my, my Representative Oliveira. Oliveira? Was the, was the sponsor of at least one of those bills. Okay. Um, we just wanted to make sure it was on the record because, uh, yes. I mean, he was our own rep. So, okay, and um, the, the city attorney's office responded three ways, right? One is we went out and we started having this discussions with all the other cities that were our neighbors, and we actually entered into interlocal agreements. I think a stack of them are, are here. Uh, interlocal agreements with our neighboring cities, resolving all these issues by agreement, as we have always done. Um, the second was we engaged in litigation, which is still going on with two of the cities that we were not able to reach agreements with. Um, and, and, and the third attack was legislative. We went back to the Texas legislature and we said, look, there are certain cities that we have agreements with. Why are you requiring us to uh, follow section 420235 if we have agreements with cities that are willing to go by 42021 and, and, and uh, with, with certain modifications that are in everybody's mutual interest. So this legislative session, uh, I think it was Senator Lucio and, Senator, and, and Representative Oliveira uh, co-sponsored resolutions uh, that basically were passed into law at the end of this legislative session. And what they do is they allow a voluntary opt-out of the cities provided you have an, a, a resolution that's passed after July of 2017. Uh, and the resolution must state that calculating our ETJ under 420235 is not on our interest, and then we can follow the same rules that the rest of the state play by, okay? So um, item 22, 23, and 24 are resolutions, proposed resolutions for the city that comply with that, that allow us to do what we've always wanted to do all along. And we still have pending litigation with uh, we have pending litigation with the town of Laguna Vista. Now that we have an interlocal agreement with Laguna Vista that we say is valid and Laguna Vista does not. And we have uh, pending litigation with Port Isabel. And there is no agreement with Port Isabel. 
And just for the record, what the hell? This is where the bridge is gonna go from Laguna Vista supposedly to South Padre. There's a, a lot of politics involved there. Yeah. I'd be interested to in see who the landowners are. Anyway, we need action. I mean, we have to read each one, I yes. know. So, but the first one is, is item number 21. I'll, I'll entertain a motion to approve. Number 22. 22. First, we're voting on 22. 22? 22. I'm sorry. Motion to approve. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Action item number 23, consideration action on resolution number 2017-040 of the City of Brownsville, Texas, finding that the calculation of its extraterritorial jurisdiction pursuant to the Texas Local Government Code 42.0235 is not in the city's best interest and in electing to calculate the City of Brownsville extraterritorial jurisdiction pursuant to Texas Local Government Code 42.021, previous interlocal agreements and adopted by the City of Brownsville and the Town of Bayview and dealing with related matters. This is an action item. Motion to approve. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Item number 24. Action item number 24, consideration and action on resolution number 2017-041 of the City of Brownsville, Texas, finding that the calculation of its extraterritorial jurisdiction pursuant to the Texas Local Government Code 42.0235 is not in the city's best interest <coughs> and electing to calculate the City of Brownsville extraterritorial jurisdiction pursuant to the Texas Local Government Code 42.021, previous interlocal agreements as adopted by the City of Brownsville and the Town of Indian Lake and dealing with related matters. This is an action item. Motion to approve. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank item you. number 25. Ma Mayor, just one second. I'm sorry. City Attorney, I'm going to push the envelope just a little bit more. Ooh. I'd like for you to find uh, deeds and find out who the landowners are. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Action item number 25, consideration and action to award a contract for the construction of an air cargo facility at the Bronzeville South Padre Island International Airport. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Good evening, Honorable Mayor, members of the Commission. The airport's uh, solicit for sealed bids for the construction of the EDA Economic Development Administration cargo facility. We received two, two bids and they were publicly opened on June 13th. The engineers reviewed and evaluated the bids prior to recommending the bid award, and the completion of this project is expected to be 150 days after notice of proceed. <clears throat> we are recommending approval to the low bidder, Davia Construction, Inc., at McAllen for $1,780,000. Is it? I'm sorry. Uh, Mr. Gonzalez, do we have uh, funds available? Yes, it's an EDA grant. Yeah, it's an EDA grant. The funds are available through the EDA grant that, that we already have secured. Motion to approve. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you so Thank much. You. Item action, number 26. Item number 26. Consideration and action to award a term contract for the engineering and surveying services for the city of Brownsville. Uh, <coughs> Honor Mayor Commissioners, uh, good evening. Uh, this is to award a contract to seven engineering and surveying firms that would provide services to the city of Brownsville. I recommend approval. Motion to approve. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Thank you. Motion carries. Just for a clarification, so you have them on a rotating basis, yes, that's yes, basically. Absolutely, yes. Okay. Action item number 27, consideration action to award a term contract for the geotechnical and construction material testing services for the city of Brownsville. Yeah, Honorable commissioners, again, this is a, a contract uh, to for four geotech and construction material testing firms which will also be on a rotation basis in our recommended pool. Motion to approve. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you, Carlos. Welcome back. Thank you. Thank you. Action item number 28, consideration and action to approve the purchase and delivery of two vehicles. Good evening. <laughs> and good evening, Honor <laughs> Mayor and Commissioners. This evening, I am here for your consideration approval to purchase two vehicles for the Human Resources Department <clears throat> These vehicles will be replacing current units which have exceeded their life expectancy and are no longer cost effective to maintain. Um, the vehicles being replaced are a 2005 Ford Taurus and a 2005 Ford Explorer that are used to conduct employee job site inspections to ensure that we are in compliance with our safety program, um, as well as the responding to emergency situations that might involve our employees. Uh, also, they are, they are used to, in the support of our drug and alcohol program, taking the random um, selections out to the testing sites. Proposals were solicited from HNC and by board 
for the purchase and delivery of 2017 Ford Explorer and the 2017 Chevy Tahoe uh, for a total of $59,803.50. Funding is in place under the Human Resource Budget, number 01-231-994-942, sorry. Um, staff recommends approval of this purchase. Any questions? Can I ask why a Tahoe? Uh, that is the, the largest enclosed vehicle that we have available through the by board and HEC. And that would be assigned to Fernando, my assistant yeah. director in safety and risk. <laughs> so, so right. basically we can't, we can't buy a larger vehicle, so we are stuck with small ones? The, there's two. There's a midsize and then the large one. The midsize is the floor, well, Ford is Explorer. That the board we actually go through for purchasing? By board. It's by board. By it's board. a cooperative, yes. And how come we don't have a, how come they don't have for larger vehicles? They, but I don't need a larger vehicle. I just need a Tahoe and an Explorer. Okay. <laughs> oh, that's what you need. Okay. 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 All right. If I might add, Commissioner, the uh, Ford Explorer is front wheel drive, and that, that was real, real wheel drive, so that's a plus. But I hear a motion. To all the, uh, motion to approve. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Thank motion you. carries. Thank, thank you, Oscar. Good number 29. Action item number 29, oh, consideration and action to award a term contract with the Universe Holdings Incorporated for the purchase, lease, and rental of uniforms for the Public Works Department. Good evening, Honorable Mayor, City Commission. The uh, department is recommending Unifirst Holdings be awarded term contract for purchase, rental, and lease services of city employee uniforms. We have uh, reviewed proposals thoroughly from uh, four participating vendors <coughs> and have determined that Unifirst Holdings provides the best uniform quality, customer service, and overall value for the department. The purchase option will be exercised for all the divisions except for landfill and street patching. Those are the dirty jobs, so we'll be using the rental service that provides a cleaning service. So funding is in place under account line item 704, budgeted for each division. Under approved? Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Action no. item number 30. Martino, just identify yourself. They don't know who you are. Martino Trevino, Public Works Superintendent. I'm sorry. <laughs> Can you repeat that? Please, Martino I couldn't hear Trevino, you. Martino Trevino, Public Works Superintendent. Thank you, Consideration and action to approve amendment to you city didn't look like Santana master, anyway. <laughs> master consulting <laughs> agreement task order 2015 4 for additional engineering services for the city of Brownsville MSW landfill. Honorable Mayor, City Commission, the department is recommending approval of additional task order 2015 4 proposed by SES engineers in the amount of $345,505. As part of the proposed scope of work, SES will provide engineering services for the design, preparation of plans and bidding documentation, uh, construction quality control, and surveying for the construction of disposal cell number four at the city landfill. Construction of cell number four causes for the westward expansion of the northern portion of the landfill and encompasses uh, nine acres in area. Disposal cell number four will create up to six years of additional disposal capacity and additional revenue, the additional revenue that comes along with that. SES is currently in the second year of a master consulting agreement with the City of Brownsville to provide general engineering services for the landfill. The cost for the additional task order uh, has us still under the 25% change order amount allowed by uh, state purchasing requirements. City Finance has allocated funds under account 79, 81, 13, 97, 25, 765. Now, was it a change order because you guys requested a change order? Or was it a change order because they want more money? It, it wasn't part of the original contract, the scope of work. So in order to build another cell, it's, it's, it's an added task. And this company has had us, I mean, we, we got in trouble once, and this particular company has always kept us. Yes, yeah, so they're, they're yeah. the first issue. Yes. Then motion to approve. Yeah. No closing like that. Motion to approve. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Um, action item number 31, consideration action to award a contract for the purchase and delivery of various heavy duty equipment for the Public Works Department. Honorable Mayor, City Commission, the department is recommending approval to proceed with the purchase of 18 new pieces of heavy equipment from various vendors in the amount of $2,000,000. 
$456,369.32 using buy board contract prices. Buy board is an approved cooperative purchase program for the state of Texas and we confirm that it has satisfied all legal procurement requirements. All prices include acceptable warranty options. The department has consulted with finance and funding for this purchase will be derived from 2013 CO fund 88 and 2017 PPF CO funds. Now are we replacing equipment or? Yes. You said two million, right? Yes, sir. Yeah. We're replacing 18 pieces of equipment. Yeah, it's heavy. It's heavy equipment. It's very expensive. Landfill and some of the equipment we need for street work and things like that. Yes, sir. I'll hear a motion. Minute proof. Second. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 The motion carries. Thank you very much. Action item number 32, consideration and action on a memorandum of understanding among the City of Brownsville and the Brownsville Historical Association regarding the preservation of historic structures. Good evening, Honorable Mayor, members of the City Commission. This MOU will allow the City of Brownsville to collaborate with the Brownsville Historical Commission on identified projects for restoration with priority to structures located within the 011 Historical District. Historical overlay, I'm sorry. Beginning with the Market Square building, which they currently lease from the city and is in need of a roof replacement and window restoration. The Market Square building is a recorded Texas historical landmark, and as such, work done to the building must be approved by the Texas Historical Commission and must follow the Secretary of Interior standards for rehabilitation. The funds for this portion of Market Square rehab will come from the proceeds of the sale from the recent real estate sales with your approval, and the amount uh, is not to exceed $291,814 with 58 cents. Mayor, uh, I want to make a statement that uh, I'm on the board of the BHA, the Browns Historical Association, so I think I'll probably have to abstain from this vote. Right. However, I want to encourage everyone to vote in favor of it because it's okay. very well needed. I, was, I toured the location recently and it's needed. I I, th I, think, I, I think most of us that are involved in the downtown have done the same thing, so appreciate the comments. Thank you. So motion to approve. Yes, second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Aye, aye abstain. Thank you. Yeah. Motion carries, and we'll be sure to note that, that the Commissioner Nice yes. uh, abstained. Thank you. Okay. Action item number 33, consideration action on approval of recent amendments to the Greater Brownsville Incentive Corporation bylaws. Good evening, Mayor, members of the Commission. Uh, the GB Board has been going through a lot of revisions. And one of the more exciting things they've done is they've created, um, or, or what they've done is they've modified their bylaws, uh, which are before you now, uh, to create an, an inside or an in, in incentives committee that'll be within the GBIC board, that'll work under the board of directors. Um, the, there will be seven members of the committee. Uh, none of them will be elect, currently elected officers or members of the GBIC board. They'll so, serve two year terms, uh, and they can be removed by the GBIC board uh, members if they're not. For, for, for whatever reason. And, and just for uh, the commission's information, we decided to go with seven members because we actually wanted to pull the commission because I think it's important that you have input. And uh, basically, when we had uh, the Brownsville Economic Development Corporation, they also had the incentives committee, and we had outstanding members of the, of the community. So what we wanted to do is we actually wanted to bring them into GBEC, and that way they could look at all economic development projects and they could give us their feedback. Um, one of the things was, uh, additionally, was that we'll go, for example, the airport. When we needed to do some economic impact studies, I mean, we had to do them through Mr. Gonzalez's office. So this incentive committee would actually be able to look at all these things, actually evaluate projects. And uh, we opened, we left it at seven members so that way uh, everybody can move and we can appoint good members of the community and everybody can have an input from the commission. Good, good, good move. Mm -hmm. uh, is there a motion to approve? Motion to approve. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Item number 34. Action item number 34, consideration and action for the mayor to create an audit and oversight committee and appoint members of said committee. Uh, Honorable Mayor, I'd like to move that you uh, establish an audit and oversight committee with me as the chairman and uh, Commissioner Munguia and Commissioner Tetro as members of the committee. But we do have an audit committee. The board does? Yes. Who's the mayor and I sit on the audit committee. Who's on The mayor and I sit on the audit committee. Do you do any work? Yes. <laughs> uh, I hope so. Yeah. I when was your last meeting? Mm -hmm. Pete, is this the same? Is this, is yes. This? Uh, we, yeah. we meet uh, right before the audit starts yeah. and after the audit is complete. Right. 
I'm, I'm asking for a committee, not a joint committee with the administration like the budget committee, a separate commission for the board, not a joint committee between the administration and the commission. Okay. So for it's a purpose? board committee. For what purpose? To audit and oversight. Okay. Uh, you have a motion on the on the floor. Uh, any discussion? I will second the motion. Oh, let me. I'm sorry. Second. Any discussion? If not, uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? No. Okay. Motion carries. Item number 35. Action item number 35, consideration action for the mayor to create a budget committee and appoint members of said committee. If I may, Mayor, I will actually, this one, uh, I moved on it, and one of the reasons was we are, the administration is actually going through the budget process right now, and uh, we haven't even had a rough draft of that budget and I know a lot of commissioners would like to have some more input on it so really this would create a board out of the Commission and that way the Commission could have some oversight when the budget process is actually happening because of what happens is they just bring us the budget at the very end so we don't really have a good chance to review it and give them their imp give them their our input you see so all the departments are working on this for months and then at the very end they just give us a, a final work product and uh, last time I checked under the separation of powers and the city charter, I think the budget should actually be a, a collaborative effort between the commission and the administration. I don't think the administration just present a budget to us and then we have to approve it. I think that we should all have some say, especially the commissioners that come from one particular district. I mean, one, two, three, and four, because sometimes there's needed projects in their areas and who better than they to actually communicate it to the commission. And what ends up happening a lot of times, it's brought to the administration, and then within the administration, I mean, it'll probably, I mean, just fall to the cracks. Okay. So I think. Um, yeah. So you're making the motion. I'll second that. And, yours, oh. and there's I a was, second. I'm sorry. I was just going to have input and say that I completely agree with you, Commissioner De Leon, in the sense that, you know, we each get elected, and when we go block walking, everybody says, "I need this, I need this, I need this, and I need this done," and we all have our priorities. But then when it goes to city staff, those priorities aren't necessarily always heard. When we have the street hump issue, minor sidewalks, small pieces of sidewalk, sometimes those things take years to do just because we really don't have any input in actually what happens with the budget. And I echo that sentiment. I would like to give more power to my constituents through this committee. Um, and back in the hands of the commission. We have a motion in a second and discussion. I have a question. Just so these are more like re recommendations, right? Mm -hmm. These committees would recommend. Right. Well, they are recommendations, but at the end, remember, Commissioner, that we create policy, and you approve the budget. So really, the administration has to work under the budget that we approve. So even though they have day-to-day -day management, and yes, the city manager has all the authority. I mean, we approve the budget. And at the end, if we feel like, I'll tell you, one of my things is I want more officers. And I've been fighting that I want more officers for two years. So this time around, I will make sure that we see where we can trim because I want to start hiring at least five more officers. Because but that comes also with collective bargaining. Well, that is true. But if we don't have the money even in place and we don't start looking for the funding source, no, the, mo the, money, the funding source comes from the collective bargaining agreement. In other words, when you start the collective bargaining process, it's do you want more officers or what is it? In other words, it's part of the bargain. It's part of the bargaining process. Well, I think uh, according to national standards, I mean, we need more officers and uh, I, I really don't see we why have, if yeah. we have, well, we, we have a motion and a second, or we had some discussion. Uh, I'm going to call for a vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Motion carries. Item number 36. Action item number 36, consideration and action for the mayor to create an agenda committee and appoint members of said committee. Well, mayor, I will move and I will actually uh, move to appoint you because you are the chairman. Uh, you are the one that actually directs the, uh, the committee. So I move to appoint the mayor, I mean, and uh, Commissioner, Gow that. Commissioner Gowan and if uh, Commissioner Munguia wants to participate because uh, I think you as a chairman, a lot of times, as you can see, we get stuff on the agenda and we get it a couple of days before the meeting, so I just want to have a committee that will have actual input into what's actually going to come into the agenda. And then what happens when like these three agenda items that weren't on there and then all of a sudden appeared and we get in an email? You know, in other words, it's a vice versa. Well, in other I words, when I got when I, I got my agenda when yeah. I got my agenda, these three these three weren't on here. 
I and then all, so it's it's an it's not necessarily an oversight. It's just that when does it go? When when you know when will it be there? And let me ask. Let me tell you, Commissioner, that I've asked that question for two years because I've always said that how is it possible that one <coughs> one person from the administration can put an action item on the agenda, but if you and I want to put it, we have to have two votes. So we went back to the city charter, and Mr. Lopez and I have reviewed it, and uh, I honestly think that it's it it kind of. It, it doesn't really make any sense, and I think it's more of a, it's more of something that's been instituted. But I don't think it's really the correct way to proceed because well, with any board, you have an agenda committee, and then within that agenda committee, you bring things up to the full board. And the thing is, a lot of times, what happens is all these things are thrown into the mix. And I'll be honest with you, like right now, all the heavy equipment, all the expenses that we've done, hey, I I know we need them, but I think it's important for at least somebody to review what's going to be on the agenda beforehand. Well, it used to take one commission. One commissioner could put anything they wanted on the agenda. It was during the Pat Omal administration that this ordinance was put into place because everything was appearing on the agenda. And all of a sudden, you had 52 items. So that's when that commission decided to put, to make it the two commissioners needed to put it on there because it was out of control. Okay. Well, all right, well, let me we'll take a look at it. There's a motion the and a second. Uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 I have a question, though. Can I ask Sure. Question? So um, people were appointed to number 34 and number 36, but not to 35. As yes. I read these, these are for the mayor to create and appoint members, but... I haven't. I haven't clear. appointed anybody there. Okay, uh, you know, I mean, I, I think I. You I were appointed, huh? You yeah. were appointed. Yeah, I was appointed was on number you. thirty-six, but on but thirty-five. On, on the, on the, the, for the budget, for the budget, you're still pending. Yeah, still pending, but in other words, we're going to create a committee, and I'm going to find out who would like to serve on that committee. Is really what I, I think. Think that's I mean, at this that's particular good. point. Yeah. Yep. I think okay. The district commission. All right. So, uh, anybody opposed on um, the motion on thirty-six? If not. Uh, so approved. Okay. Now I entertain a motion for adjournment. Adjourn. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carried.